to give us perfect light by your gospel, and it has called us daily to learn by the means of those whom you have sent, especially our pastor. Favor us in the name of Jesus, that we may not be deaf, nor tired to hear and obey, but immediately submit ourselves to you, and to be ruled by your word, not our human reason. That through our whole life, we may witness that you are indeed our God and Lord and Savior. We be in your people until we shall be called up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this morning. We pray in the name of Jesus, you forgive us for all of our sins and iniquities, our transgressions, and our trespasses. We pray for the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit that you will speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds and souls, Father. Cause us to walk upright before you. Cause us to hear your word this morning and be obedient to the doctrine. We pray that you teach us, that you lead and guide us by the Holy Spirit. Have mercy upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. The church say Amen. Amen. Okay. Sunday morning again. Thank God for being here. Amen. 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 Seeing and looking at what's happening all over this world. God is judging this world, church. God is judging his world and he's doing his work. That's why we talk about the work of God. We don't nail down the work of God to one aspect or one phase of what God is doing in this sin-sick world. God is working in the world. He works in the world and he works in his, in his people. And we've been defining five words we've been strictly dealing with as it pertains to the work of God. Those words are pro to imazo, Poi to imazo, pro orizzo, apro rizzo, car cartizo, and hentoi mazo. Those are the five words that we've been looking at as it talks about the work of God. Poi to imazo means to prepare or to make ready or to ordain. You can find poi to imazo in Ephesians 2.10 and Romans 9.23. We also been talking about the whole red zone. And that's what God has done to his elect. He has limited us in advance. That is the elect. He's limited us in advance to hear. Here in the Hebrew, man in the Greek means to obey the word of God. Also, our for red zone. He has set us off by boundary. He has set us off by boundary. And we're bound inside the light. We're bound inside the light. He has separated us and divided us. That's what he did to us when we was at the fruit of us. He divided us and he separated us from the darkness that we were surrounded by we, so that we can be, be in the light. So we can be in the light. And I lose that, that thing. I had a little picture there. I have, but I don't know what happened to me. Maybe I can't back. And so that's what he did to us while we was at the funeral. He set us off by a boundary. He moved us away from the darkness that we were surrounded by. We went in light and we left in light. That is aphorizo. That means to set off. God does the setting off. He sets us off by a boundary and he separates and divides us from the darkness, not only the darkness that's in the world, but also the darkness that's in us. He set us off. That's the main place where he works at is setting us off. It's the darkness that is in us in our imagination, the darkness that is in our minds, the residue and the remnant of sin that is in us. Some believe that they have no sin, no more sin in them, but that is a lie. We still have residue. We still have residue of sin. We still have some deposits of sin located, located in us. Yes, located in us. So, oh, I got it. 
get to get to Jay. You like that. You like that. You make it feel good about yourself. <laughs> Now, we're still talking about what? What is our subject we've been talking about for the last two weeks? Theocracy. 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 Get your notes. Pull your notes out like I tell you. So you won't be struggling. Try to remember you're learning. You're in Bible study. So have your little notes out so you can refer to your notes. What is theos, man? What is theos? What is theos? God. Theos is God. And what is crossy? Jeremiah, what is crossy? Huh? It's the Latin word kratos, kratos, right? It means to rule and it means to reign. And we're talking about the rule and the reign of God. And the rule and the reign of God takes place, takes place where at? The rule and the reign of God. So when you're looking at a rule, you're looking at a reign. The first thing that should come to your mind is a what? The kingdom of God. Thank you, J.D., a king. The first thing that should come to your mind is a king. You see rule, you see reign, you should see king. Then that comes in, like J.D. say, that is the kingdom. That's the kingdom. That's the kingdom of God. That is what mankind, I was reading last night, that is what mankind is seeking to establish in the world. They want to establish the kingdom of God, the rule and the reign of God in the world, which they cannot because Jesus said, Jesus said in John 18, 36, Jesus said in John 18, in verse 36, he said, my kingdom is not from this world. My kingdom is not from here. Where is he from? He's, above. he's from above. He's from above. That's what he told me. He said, I am from above in Romans and the eighth chapter, it's the eighth chapter of the book of uh, St. John. He said, I am above, you are beneath. And I, I am, you are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you to go to Romans 9, 23, right? Yes. Amen. So let's go to Romans chapter 9, verse number 23. We're looking at the word toy, toy, mouse, correct? Yes. So we go to Romans chapter 9, and we go to Romans chapter 9, and we go to verse number 23. It says, uh, it says, and he, and he, and he, and he, and he, and that he made known, talking about God, the riches of his glory, of the vessels of mercy, which he had a four prepared, that's the word, proi, toy, mazo, a four prepared. That's what he's saying. Paul does not know who the vessels of wrath are. Paul does not know who are the vessels of mercy, and neither do we. We don't find that out when the person dies. The person continues to stay in false doctrine, and he died in false doctrine. We know that person was a vessel of, a vessel of wrath. That's what he talks about here. As it is written, uh, we can, no, well, I'm not going to go through this. I'm going to teach that later. But we're looking at the word proi toi mazo, which is the word of for prepare unto glory. And then he said, and then look what he said. Look what Paul said in 24. Even us, even us, which men he have called. 
not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So he called Jews and he called Gentiles. And he called them in repentance. Hello? Amen. That's what he said. As he said also in Hosea, the Hosea, I will call them my people which were not my people and her beloved which was not my beloved. And we don't know who that is. So that's why we preach to everybody. Because we don't know who they are. We don't know what Jews he has called. We don't know what Gentiles he has called. He has called all men to repent. So that's how that's how that goes. I'll be dealing with that later. Okay? Then we look at Ephesians 2.10, looking at the word for Joy Mazo. Joy Toy Mazo. We look at Ephesians chapter 2. We look at Ephesians. We look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 10. Amen. Ephesians 2, verse 10. And it says, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained. Before ordained is one word. It's one word. You don't look up before and ordained. It's one word. It's before ordained. It's before ordained. And this is a for, old English, a for prepared. But that is the old English. Now I'm going to look at the above. Let's go over to the book of John. Let's go over to the book of St. John. Let's go over to the book of St. John. Let's go to the book of St. John. St. John. We're still talking about the theocracy of God. That's what we're talking about. God, if we are in a theocracy. And that theocracy is the kingdom of God. That's what that theocracy is. So we want to go over to John. Amen. We want to go to John chapter 8. We want to go to St. John chapter 8. We're going to be still dealing with John 13. We're really going to be dealing with John 13 today. We want to go to John chapter 8. Amen. We want to go to John chapter 8. And we want to look at John chapter 8. And we want to look at verse number, verse number, we want to look at verse number 21. Then said Jesus again unto them. We go back down to verse number 13. And he's talking to the Pharisees. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, You bear his record of yourself. Your record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them. Now, we want to keep in mind too. Looking at the theocracy of God. Not only we're studying about the theocracy of God. When we study about the theocracy of God, we're also doing exegesis. We're doing exegesis. And exegesis. What is exegesis? Exegesis is the practice of discovering the meaning of the text in its original, cultural, historical, literal, literary, and theological context. The practice of discovery. It's a practice, right? Yes. So if it's a practice, if it's a practice, words come to my mind, it's systematic, ain't it? Yes. It's systematic and it's set, right? Yes. It's an exegesis. Exegesis. Exegesis, exegesis, exegesis is the practice of discovering the meaning of a text. It's the practice, the practice. That means you don't do it one time, you do it often. The practice of discovering, the practice of discovering. If you're discovering something, if you're discovering, you're constantly looking. You've got the I-N-G on the end of the word. So that means that that means continual, the ing on the word, the meaning, the meaning, that is continual. You got ing up uh, on the end of the world, discovering the meaning, the meaning of, of a text, the, of a text, talking about text of scripture. That's what we're talking about, talking about a text of scripture, talking about a text of scripture. In its, in its. What do its refer to? What do its refer to, man? So you're doing all that writing, and I told you about that, and you're not paying. What do its refer to, Mama? 
the uh, practice of discovery. No, I don't. What do it's refer to, Kelly? The text. What do it's refer to, J.D.? The text. Exegesis. The practice of discovery, the meaning of a text. In, in the text. In the text. That's the scripture, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why I put it up there. The text. The text is the scripture. Okay. okay? The text is the scripture. That's what the text is. Mm -hmm. Okay? The text of the scripture. The text of its, that's the scripture. Yes, that's what we're using today, right? It got to be the scriptures, and we're not using any other book. Mm -hmm. The text of the scripture in its original, original, original. So we got to go back to the language, don't we? Yes. If, we if we're going to look at the original, we got to go back to the original language. We got to go back to the Hebrew. We got to go back to the Greek, right? Yes. In its original cultural, right? Yes. Cultural. We got to look at the culture. C U L T U R A L. Cultural. We got to look at history, right? Historical. Historical. We got to look at literary. I E T. Literary. We got to look at the literary, and we got to look at theological. Theological. Theo. Logical, right? Theological context, right? That's what we're doing. That's exegesis. Now you can write, man, and mama, right? Now you can write. Exegesis is the practice of discovering the meaning of a text, the scripture, and it's the scripture's original language, its culture, its historical, its theological context. Started off with the theocracy of God. So that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about the theocracy of God. The theocracy of God is the kingdom of God. Because we got theos, which is the word God. We got cross, which comes from the word kratos, means to rule and the reign of God. And God is the king in the kingdom. And where is that kingdom located at? That kingdom of God is in us. That's where the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is not of the world. So we look at St. John, and we're looking at St. John, and we stay in the context. The context, we look at historical, this is in AD 32, this is when the this is when Jesus is preparing, making ready. What Jesus is doing is preparing, preparing, and making ready his disciples. That's what he's doing. He's preparing and he's making ready his disciples. He came to his own, and his own received him not, and his own was the Jews. They did not receive him when he came. What he's doing is He's calling them to repentance. The first word he told them when he came to them was what? Repent. That's the first thing he said when he stopped preaching the gospel. Many people don't pay attention to the context and understand what Jesus was saying. When Jesus came, the first word he said to them was repent. He got a lot of people, a lot of men studying the word of God. Over the years, they have learned some things of the word of God and they have nailed down the doctrine. They have nailed their foot in the ground. They have said, but well, this is what this means. I don't care what nobody else say. This is what it means, and this is what I'm sticking to. God has revealed it to me. And I turn around and tell him, no, he has not. That's you. That's your imagination. That's what you believe God has said to you. And what you believe don't mean nothing. Our experience is not above the scripture. Amen. Our experience that we believe, that we have had, Experience must line up with scripture. Let me put that up here. Experience must line. Experience must be from the scripture, not line. That's a terrible word to use. Your experience must be out of the scripture. Whatever you experience, your experience is personal, personal involvement. Your personal involvement must be founded on the scripture. If your personal involvement with the word of God, personal involvement with, with the word of God, of God, the, the, your personal involvement with the Word of God, who is going to bring that about? 
your experience or personal involvement with the Word of God, who is going to bring about the experience, the personal, personal involvement with the Word of God? Who is going to do that? The Holy Spirit. See, many of y'all were scared to answer because you have forgot. You cannot have the Holy Spirit without the Word. Wherever you find the Word, you're going to find the Holy Spirit. Wherever you find the Word, you're going to find the Holy Spirit. You find the Word of God right here in, in John chapter 8. Where is the Holy Spirit at? In John, in John chapter 8, where we, where we at? Where is the Holy Spirit at? What, where is the Holy Spirit at? Many of you don't know. Jesus. Excuse me, y'all don't know. I talked to the whole congregation. Say, I don't know. In Jesus. Jesus. Say, I don't know. If you don't know, say, say you don't know. Don't sit there and try to look at Scripture and find it because you're not going to find it there. You're supposed to know this. Jesus could not do nothing until he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's go to, thank you, J.D. Let's go to Luke chapter 4. I don't like that when y'all do that. That's, that's deception you're practicing. That's deception you're practicing. If you don't know, you don't know. Then you get to read the Scripture and say, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. John, Luke chapter 4. Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. He cannot do nothing, Rose. He cannot do nothing, Carolyn, until he's filled with the Holy Ghost. He can't do nothing. Nothing. He cannot start his ministry without the God. He cannot go himself. He must go in the power of the Spirit. Look at John chapter 1. He must go in the power of the Spirit. If you don't know, say, I don't know. Say, well, I don't know. I forgot. Show me again, pastor, teacher. Many people don't know this. You're not the only one that's noticed. Those that's watching me that don't know. Okay. Uh, John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 15. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. For he was before me. Of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. We receive of his fullness. Grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared God. He hath declared the Father. That's who he hath declared. This is the witness of martyr, martyr, martyr of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask John, John, who are you? John confessed and denied not, but John confessed, I am not the Christ. The Jews, the Jews, the priests, the Jews, the priests, the Levites asked him because the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him. So the Jews is asking, coming out of the priests' mouth, right? Yeah. It's coming out of the priest's mouth. But well, who's doing the acts? Why are the Jews doing the acts? Because they sent them. And he confessed and denied not to confess I am not the Christ. They asked him, what then, what then, terrible translation ain't. It should be what? Who? Who? Thank you very much. Who then are you, Elias? And he said, I am not. Are you that prophet? What prophet, J.D.? Deuteronomy 13. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, 18. Thank you very much. Deuteronomy 18, 15, right in your Bible. You got an F man, all you got to do is look in your mark. Amen. And he answered, No. And they, then said they unto him, Who are you? Now they asked, Who are you? Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. You got what then? And then they got, Who are you? Right? Mm -hmm. And we may give an answer to them that sent us. Who sent them on? Do you know where I'm at? Are you following me wrong? How do you get lost? I'm at verse 22. I can't see something. All right, all right, so now you can't see something. Now we got to try to get you some good glasses, right? So you can see. No, I got brand new glasses. But you can't still can't see. You need to cut it. It's like my eyes are dry. Okay, you don't care who is he that sent? The Jews. The Jews sent him at verse 22. Are you at verse 22? I thought you said 21. Uh huh. Now I tell you to put your finger there and follow along, but get your pen and follow along. I know you elderly people have a hard time. Some of you young, middle-aged, have a hard time. 
So what you do is you just use your feet. Well, what's the problem? Well, put your pen in there and follow along where it's the word. That's, that's the best way to do it. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord as said the prophet Esaias. And they which were sent were from the Pharisees. So the Jews, what was the Jews? They were Pharisees. Pharisees. That's why I tell you to put your finger there. You can follow along. That's how I read. That's exactly what I'm doing up here. He said, they asked him and said unto him, why, why, why washes you then? If you be not the Christ nor Elias, neither that prophet. And in verse 26, John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. I wash with water. But there stand the one among you whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes of action I'm not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Beth Arbor, Beth Abara, Beth Abara, Beth Abara, it's the house of something. Beth Abara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said after me, come to man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. I knew him not. He said that in verse 15. For he was before me. That's what he said in verse 15. I didn't tell you to read it. I just said, that's what he said in verse 15. <laughs> and I knew him not. I'm at verse 31. And I knew him not. But that he should be made manifest to Israel for that reason. He tell you exactly why he's washing with water. So that he can be made manifest to Israel. He came to his own, his own received him not. Go over to verse number 11. Go over to verse number 11. He came into his own and his own received him not. Go back over to verse number 31. Back to 31. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. And he came to his own. He came to Israel, and Israel did not receive him. Therefore am I come washing with water, and John bear record, he bear witness. He bear witness. That's what record means. It means material. It means to witness. John bear witness. Saying. How do you bear witness? Saying, I saw the Spirit descending, coming down from heaven like a dove and it abode up on him. He was full of the Spirit. You cannot do nothing except the Holy Spirit is in. Okay? So we go back over to John chapter 8. Go back to John chapter 8. Remember that. You can't do nothing without the Spirit. Whatever you, wherever you find the Word, the president has been set with Jesus. The precedent has already been set with Jesus. You got the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. You got him being full of the Spirit when he came out of the wilderness. And you got him, he is the Word of God. And he's sent by the Father. You have the Trinity all there. He's sent by the Father. So everything is right there. Okay, church? Amen. All right. Hallelujah. So everything is right there. All right, church? Yes. All right, now let's go back over to chapter yes. 8. So we go back over to chapter 8. We go back over to chapter 8. And so we get back over to chapter 8. And at chapter 8, we was at verse number 21, right? Mm -hmm. 21. It says, Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way. I go my way. I go my way. And you should, his way is, what is his way? The way is the cross. I go my way. He's talking about going back to the Father, right? Right? Yes. I go my way. You shall seek me and shall die in your sin. You cannot die in sin. If you die in sin, you are in trouble, right? Amen. You die in sin. Because the work of man is sin, right? Yes. And our works follow us, right? Yes. yes. So you cannot die in sin. I know. Because whether I go, you cannot come. Because they died in sin. Mm. So if you die in sin, you cannot go where Jesus is. And that is right now. Where is he? Right now. Amen, J.D. He's on the right hand side of the Father. So you cannot die in sin. You can't. You die in sin, you go to hell. 
cannot go and be with him. Then said the Jews, then said the Jews, what are these Jews? Pharisees. The Amen. Pay attention. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he said, well, I know you cannot come. He said unto them, you are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I said for that reason unto you, that you shall die in your sins, because you are from beneath. Therefore, refers all the way back to you are from beneath. I said for that reason, you are from beneath, that you shall die in your sins. But if you believe not that I am, you shall die in your sin. <coughs> Unbelief is sin. You just seen it. Unbelief is sin. That's the worst thing. That's the worst sin it is. On the face of the earth is unbelief. Unbelief. We go through these scriptures and these and you hear somebody say, well, I don't believe that. And I've been telling y'all that. That's sin. I don't believe he's saying that to me. I don't believe that's what that means. I don't believe. That's called unbelief. I, I. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Do y'all really understand what people be saying? I do not. That's unbelief. I do not believe. This, I hear this so much. I'm telling y'all, I hear this so much. Well, I don't believe that's what that means. Well, I don't believe God is saying that to me. Well, I don't believe that's what he wants me to do. I do not believe your exegesis. I don't believe the practice of discovering the meaning of a text of scripture and it's the scriptures original language, cultural, historical, literary, theological context that you're telling me. I don't believe that. Well, if you don't believe that, you don't believe that he, you don't believe that Jesus, he is. Amen. That's what you don't believe. You say, I don't believe he is. You cannot receive the word of God. I got something I'm going to show you about the preacher that I've been studying and it hit me, this, hit me yesterday when I was studying and it was marvelous in my sight. You cannot hear about here without a preacher. You got these people that's going around preaching predestination, Carolyn, and they say God can speak through a mule. Well, God can speak through anybody he want to speak through now. You got people saying this, and y'all listen very carefully to what they say. They say God can speak through anybody now. God can speak through whoever he want to now. Whoever God wants to speak through, he can speak through. If God wants to use so-and-so, he can use so-and-so. If God wants to use that man, he can use that man. God wants to speak to a mule through a dog. No, he can't. There's only one way God is speaking. Amen. That's the name. There's only one way God is speaking today. There's only one way God. It's only one way God is speaking today. If anybody else tells you God is not speaking the way that I showed you, they are not of God. They are not of truth. There's only one way God is speaking. Amen. And when people don't want to receive the truth because they in their error, then they start making all these excuses and try to speak as if they are so profound. And God has given them some type of special revelation. How did John get the revelation? John did not get the revelation directly in front of Jesus. I'm going to put this up there. John, in the book of Revelation, did not get revelation, right? Direct, right? Right. Directly. Directly. That means from Jesus' mouth to John's ears. Right? Right. From Jesus. John got it through an angel. Yep. Let's look at it in the book of Revelation. I want y'all to see this because here you got people out here that got a little knowledge. What I just say? A little knowledge. A little knowledge. I always talk about God told them something. God ain't told them nothing. Look at the book of Revelation. Look at the book of Revelation. 
Look at the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 1. Amen. Look at Revelation chapter 1, we look at verse number 1. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, God gave unto him. So we get Jesus Christ, he gets the revelation from God. And we know that if he got it from God, he got it from God the Father. Amen. He got it from God the Father to show unto his servants. Situation, circumstances, and events. That's what, Jeremiah, that's what the whole book of Revelation is about. The whole book of Revelation is about situations, right? Situations, right? We're going to check about, we're going to look at a situation. I'm, I'm going to give you a situation today. Situation, circumstances, right? Amen. Things that's standing around you, right? Yes. So you can understand what's going on around you, right? Right. Right? So yes. you can understand circumstances, events, right? Mm -hmm. Certain events that take place, right? Yes. That's what things is. That, that is things. And, and all through the book of Revelation, that is what he shows. us. Okay. So I'm going to start off. We started about, we're still talking about the opposite and the next of Jesus. Let me give you an exegesis of the situation and circumstance in a minute. We already seen Jesus was from above. We all we already know your experience must be from the scripture. Any experience you go through, it has to line up with scripture. You got to have that experience that happened in your life. If it happened in your life, there must be an example or a pattern or a model, a pattern, a model, or a paradigm. Paradigm. D I G M, a paradigm that would, that's a model. That's a model. That's a pattern. That's a pattern. That's a, that's a model. Or it's a pattern that's already set. It's a pattern or a model that's already been set. It's already, it's a pattern. It's already been set by God. And that pattern and that model is going to continue until the end of time in his theocracy, in the kingdom of God, okay? Yeah. So your experience must be from the scripture. So now, we look at it, we say, the revelation of Jesus Christ, God gave unto Jesus Christ to show unto his service, situation, circumstances, events, which must shortly come to pass, happen. They're gonna happen in a very short while. And also, 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 or Kai, and or that is, he sent. That is signified it. What did he signify? The revelation. The revelation. Because see, people still don't know, understand what it means, Eric. They still not read. That's why I tell you, follow along. Put your finger there. Follow along. Follow along. Put your finger there. Put your finger there. Follow along. Amen. I read it slow so you can understand it and see it. The revelation of. That means from. That's where I'm at now. I'm from. It comes from Jesus Christ. It tells you where he got it from. Which God gave to him. He gave it. Why didn't God give it to him? To show unto his servants things, situations, circumstances, events, which, which things, which situations, which circumstances, which events must surely come to pass. He sent and signified it. The revelation, it refers back to the revelation. By his angel. That's how he did it. So John don't get it directly from Jesus. Jesus get it directly from the Father. Jesus give it to the angel. And the angel gives it to John. John does not get it directly. One on one with him and Jesus. John gets the message through the angel. And the messenger angel throughout the Bible is called Gabriel. So that angel has to be Gabriel. That's how John gets the message. John gets the message from Gabriel. Gabriel gives the message to John. John going to get a message to the seven churches in Asia. 
the seven churches in Asia get the revelation from John. John gets it from the angel. The angel gets it from Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Christ gets it from God. Let me put that on the board. This is protocol. This does not change. This is what people don't understand. How do the revelation come? The revelation comes, is, number one, is from, from God Father. Father. Two. Two. Jesus. Christ. Jesus Christ gives it to angel. Angel to John. John to seven. That's exactly how it goes. That, that has never changed. That's exactly how it goes. You got the revelation from God the Father. Gave it to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave it to the angel. The messenger angel to God. Scripture is Gabriel. The messenger angel to our Scripture is Gabriel. Gabriel gives it to John. John gives it to the seven churches. It comes from the Father. The protocol has not changed. When Jesus came, who, when Jesus came, who sent him? The Father. The message that Jesus preached when he came came from who? The Father. Then Jesus Christ, he takes the message now. He don't give it to the angel. Now the message is not going to come from Jesus Christ to Gabriel to the angel. It comes from Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, to the preacher. No angel comes to me and tell me anything. We have the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. John is on the island of Patmos. That's where he is. He says, John, John is on the island. He already got the Holy Spirit in him. I said, he already got the Holy Spirit in him. I said he already got the Holy Spirit. You're on the island of Patmos. Island of Patmos. Insurrectionists and murderers, all the criminals was put on this island. He already got the Holy Spirit in him. Hello? Amen. Verse number, verse number, verse number, verse number 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard. Behind me a great voice as of trouble. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Now verse number 10. You already got the Holy Spirit in. So he recognized the voice of it. Amen. Because you got the Holy Spirit in you. You can't recognize the voice of God unless you got the Holy Spirit in you. you got the Spirit in you, you don't recognize the voice. The voice is the Word of God. Because many people think that they hear it from God and their experiences is not lining up with God. Their experiences is not from Scripture. Experience must be from the Scripture. And I'm going to show you that now. Okay. Now. People say I don't believe that what I'm teaching. They don't believe this. They ain't got no ear here. And I'll tell them to their face, I don't care who they is. I don't care who they is. I don't care who they is. The experience must line up with the word of God. Now I'm going to show you something. So we just had an experience, right? We had an experience. When we went to Cleo's funeral, road dip. Yes. We had an experience, right? Yes. But that experience better line up with the scripture. Because if that's the, we know it was ordained and ordained of God. Right? Amen. We know it was already ordained and arranged of God. But if it's in the theocracy of the kingdom of God and it's of truth, the only way we got we gonna find out if we're right or wrong is through the scripture, right? Yes. Because right? y'all don't know whether you did right or wrong. All you did was you know, follow did. Did. Amen. That's all you did. You know, you did. Right. You know, you can't understand how some things you'll follow me on and obey me. 
Stand up there as you walk. Some things you would do, I tell you to do some things you won't. I wonder why. Amen. See, that's going to be a witness against you. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. It's very scary, church. Yes, it is. It's going to be a witness against you. Uh -huh. Now, why, why you obey him when he told you to do this? Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to obey him when he told you to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you think you can choose which one you can obey, don't you? Don't you? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the experience we just had. Got to line up with scripture, John. If it didn't line up with scripture, I was leading y'all wrong. Okay? Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to the letter chapter of the book of Revelation. Amen. Amen. I want to read this. I think, when I read this, I couldn't believe it. But I did. And I thank God. I read it Friday. Got this Friday. Isn't it Friday? Friday? Yes. Eleven. There was giving me a reed like a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar. And them that worship in the temple of God at the altar. But the court which is without the temple, leave out. Don't measure it. It's not included. Measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. The Gentiles. I will give power unto my two witnesses. They shall prophesy a thousand two hundred threescore days, Clothed in sackcloth. Humility. That's what sackcloth is. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. If any man would hurt the two candlesticks, fire proceed out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man would hurt them, he must in this matter be killed. These have power to shed heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. When they shall have finished their testimony, the beasts that ascended out of the bottomless pit, that's the earth, shall make war against them, the two olive trees and shall overcome them and kill them. Their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nation shall see the two witnesses, the two olive trees, their bodies, and see their bodies three days and a half, three and a half years, 1260 days, same thing. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. They that dwell upon the earth, the people of kindred, the tongues, and the nations shall, shall rejoice over them and make merry, shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets, the two olive trees, tormented them. <laughs> That's what we did. We tormented them. That's what happened to Cleo's friend. We tormented them. Tormented them that dwelt on the earth. After three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, the two out of trees, the two witnesses, two prophets, come up here. And they ascended up to heaven in the cloud, 
and their enemies beheld them. And their enemies beheld them. Now, I'm going to read you something about our experience we had at that room. That was one of the most evil and wickedest things I have ever seen in my life. Even Charles, when he came by Friday, said, Preacher, I'm just not processing it. I, I still haven't processed it. It's still bothering me right now. I've never seen nothing so evil in my life. And so the reason we left is because there was no truth there. That's why we left, because there was no truth. They hated Leo. His wife hated him. His family hated him. They hated him. I'll show you why they hated him. I'll try to keep it in order. Then I'm going to we're going to come back to the two witnesses. We're going to, well then let me do the two witnesses, two witnesses first. Let me do the two witnesses They Well no, I can do it this way. Still on the line up. They hated him because he had truth. They hated him. I want you I want to read his obituary. I want you to read, read it. I want to read his obituary. It says, Life Reflections. That's what his obituary says. Did I, did I need yours by Jenny? Yes, he did. It says, Life Reflections. Reflections of his life. That's what it says. And this is what his obituary says. Cleo Watson Gillette was born on February 7, 1941, in Lashburg, Tennessee. He was welcomed into this world by his loving parents, Averne, Christine Gillette. He was raised in Chicago, worked at Greedy and Hanson Engineers as an architectural designer for 20 years. He was an architectural designer. That means he could draw. He would draw up plans and blueprints of cattle. Cleo drew this. Cleo was an architectural designer. All of the all, all of the drawings in here and everything you see was designed and found by Cleo. J.D. had that blowed up. That right there, that right there is where you see the structure and dimension of the tabernacle. You blow that up, right? Yeah. J.D. blowed that up for us. Cleo found the pictures. Cleo went and found, this is what I, he's an architectural designer. It says he's an architectural designer for 20 years. Cleo retired in 2003, but continued to work for the city of Country Club Hills as a bus driver for 10 years, he served in the National Guard during the riots after the death of Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968. Cleo married his wife Pamela Lewis on January 3, 1987 and celebrated 35 years together. Their union was blessed with the daughter Michelle. His son Kevin mourns his passing and his youngest son Keith preceded him in death on April 5, 2018. Two of Cleo's brothers passed away before him. Calvin in 2016. Calvin Gillette is the one who introduced me to his brother Cleo Gillette. And Charles in 2021. The hearts of many were broken when Cleo was called home to be with the Heavenly Father. To be with the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father. Should have been His Heavenly Father to be with the Heavenly Father at 6.02 p.m. on Good Friday, April 15, 2022. They have nothing listed in here about him being a member of the Narrow Odos ministry at all. This is not even a traditional obituary. All obituaries, even traditional, they will say, well, so-and-so, so-and-so accepted Christ at an early age. This obituary says nothing about his relationship with God. Amen. You cannot have a relationship with God unless you belong to a ministry. Amen. You cannot have a relationship with God unless you belong to a ministry. Especially, but I just said, especially that preaches predestination and the sovereignty of God. Amen. Outside of predestination 
and the sovereignty of God, there is no relationship. Outside of predestination and the sovereignty of God, there is no relationship with God. Amen. I tell anybody. That. Amen. Outside of predestination and the sovereignty of God, there is no relationship with God. Amen. They did not list one thing about his relationship, his personal experience, or his involvement with God or the ministry that he belonged to. He retired, he retired, and Cleo retired in 2003. That's when I was introduced to him. I was introduced to Cleo in 2003. Cleo joined the ministry in the beginning or some part of 2004. Cleo was a member of this ministry for for, over, for 18 years. There is not one thing said in this obituary concerning his relationship with God. I have over, I have over one, two, three, four, five to six baskets full of folders with notes from Cleo. And this is how his folders look. This is a folder. These are notes from Cleo from being in the ministry. These are his notes. These are his notes that he took while he was in the ministry. This is just one of his folders. And he had been taking notes for 18 years. 18 years. There's no individual that ever has been a part of the Never Hold Dose ministry that can match notes with Cleo Gillette. Mm -hmm. No man. When I say he wrote down everything, he wrote down everything. This is just some of his notes. This is just one folder of his notes. This is just some of his notes. These are just some of his notes. These are just some of his notes. These are just some, these are his recent notes. These are his recent notes. This is the note of his, and this is in 2021. These, this is his note. These are his notes. These are his notes. This is what he learned in this ministry that I taught. These are the notes that he will take while I'm preaching. He take these notes while I'm preaching. You go home. Watch the DVD. He will go home and watch the DVD again, and he said he will add something, add more to it. But these are these are his notes. These are his notes. This is just one teaching, one set of notes. Of his. This is just one. Set. These are his notes. And he did this for 18 years. He did this for 18 years. He did this. For for 18 years. He did this for 18 years. This is what I taught him. I taught him and everything, and I taught him everything that I said, he wrote it down. He did this for 18 years. When, when I, you remember I told y'all to go home and get the word poured 20 miles over? I said, y'all need to go home and get the word poured 20 miles over and write down all the scriptures. He did. He got toy toy miles on. He got the work of God. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Strong stairs and mass definition. He got toy toy miles on. Pro Rizzo, Afro Rizzo, Car Tizzo, and Het Toy Miles on. He did. He did. He did exactly. Cleo did exactly what I taught him. He did, he did exactly what I taught him. Now, he did that for 28 years. 18, 18 years. J.D., he found those pictures. I asked him to do it. He found the picture. J.D. blew that up for me. Uh -huh. Cleo put all, all them Greek uh -huh. letters and Hebrew letters. He that's Cleo. Five. That's oh, Cleo right there. That's Cleo. All you see over here is Cleo. That's Cleo there. This is Cleo here. Cleo when he got the sons of Jacob. He wrote this out. The sons of Levi, Jacob, Elias, third son of the priest. He 
He started right here. When you see the red, you see Levi. Every time you see red, you see Levi. Levi. He numbered. Levi. He put up the divisions of the sons of Aaron by lot in the 24 orders. This one is talking about the 24 elders. That's where, he, that's where the 24 elders come out of. Cleo did this. Now look this on that this video. Cleo went and got all the names of the false gods of Nimrod. That's what this is. This is what the world is worshiping. This is what Nimrod was called. Nimrod was called a confounder. He got the scripture here, Exodus oh. 23 and 5. Oh, I God. asked him to do this. This is for our learning. And he did. Poseidon, you hear about. That's nobody but Nimrod. Kronos, Nimrod. Odin, Nimrod. Uh, Janus, Nimrod. Mercury, Neptune, Jupiter, Pluto. They worship the star. That's Nimrod. Uh, Saturn, you see all the names of the planets? That's Nimrod. Mithra, you know, Nimrod. You know, His wild book, Nimrod. Osiris out of the, out of the uh, uh, Egyptians. Bacchus, the god of fortifications and the god of lust. Chaos, Bellas, all of this. They call him the son of the sun. Cleo did this. Then he went and got the name of Nimrod's mom, Simeret. He got scripture up there to go with it. Then he got all the names that she'll call Easter, Aphrodite, Minerva, Venus, Diana, Astarte, Isis, Isis, Parvati, all over in India, all over in the Middle East, Lakshmi, all those names are names of nobody but Simeret. He did that. This is not here, everybody. Is. Those are Cleo's books there. Those are Cleo's books. This is 18 years that she not, ain't nothing in here about Cleo's ministry. This is, that's why we put this library here. All of these books you see right here, those are Cleo's books. Cleo got that for me. He went in, found that, and we blowed that up. You blowed it up. JD did. We found that. JD blowed that up for me. We did that one right here. But the pictures. Cleo found it. All these pictures, every picture you see around here, all of these pictures, Solomon's Temple, all of these pictures you see around here, Cleo went and found those pictures because I asked him to, and he put them up. Cleo drew this right here. And give y'all a picture of what a uh, new birth is. Cleo drew this. He added the scriptures for me in them, and this tells you about the new birth. It tells about the outer man and the inner man. He did this one for me, he did this. I didn't know that Cleo could draw like that. I asked, I said, Cleo, you know how to draw? He said, yes, I do. And that's what he did for me. He drew all of that. He drew all of that for me. He also did this one. I didn't put it up. He also did the kingdoms for me. This is the king. These are the kings of northern Israel. These are the kings of northern Israel. And these are the kings. I didn't put this up. Eric, you got to find somewhere to put this. Okay. These are the kings of northern Israel and the kings of Judah. They said all the kings of northern Israel and the kings of Judah. You need to find someone to put this here. And the dates. Cleo did all of this. Cleo was an architectural designer. 18 years. This woman did not put anything in here. Not one thing that pertains to his relationship with God. So, this would be a lie. Amen. This is a lie. This obituary is a lie. Because it only has fleshly accolades in it. It has no truth to it at all. Good. So you can understand. Mm -hmm. It has no... Ch -ch -ch. No, I'm wrong. Right. It has no truth to it at all. These people, his wife, his daughter, his sisters, his brothers, all of those who rose up against us at that funeral, they hate truth. They hate it. There's no truth to this at all. I wanted you to understand how people hate truth. 
They don't go around, I hate that what you preach. I hate it. They just go against it. Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me. They were not with him. These people hate truth. Now turn your Bible to John. Turn your Bible to St. John. I said they what? They hate through. Go to St. John. Go to St. John. Go to St. John. Go to St. John. And let's go to John 13, 19. So our experience, right, yes. that we went through, it got to be found in Scripture. If we cannot find that experience in Scripture, then we were wrong. But our experience must be in Scripture. Go to John 13, 19. Amen. Amen. He said, now I tell you before it come, now I tell you before it comes, that when it has come to pass, you may believe that I am. Right? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's go to 1429. Amen. 1429, are you there? Amen. It say, and now. I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, you might believe, right? Yes. All right. What is it that is come to pass? Let's go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Now, what is come to pass? We got to find out what has come to pass, right? Yes. Yes. What is he talking about when he say when it come to pass, right? Yes. All right. Matthew 10 and verse 22. We're looking at come to pass, correct? Yes. We're looking at come to pass, right? Yes. They hated Cleo. They hated Cleo. And I told them that. And I'm telling y'all that about you. They hate y'all. They hate you. Why do they hate you? Because of the truth. They hate the truth. Look at verse chapter 10, verse 22. Amen. Are you there? Amen. Yes. Say, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Hello? Amen. He got truth in the Bible. What? He got truth with right there in the Bible. Wait, 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 wait. Get yeah, one too. Yeah, what in this Bible? What in this Bible? That's Cleo's Bible? Yeah. That's one of Cleo's Bible. I told you, John, I had you there. This Cleo's Bible, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 this is not Cleo's Bible. Right? This is Link's Bible. No, this is, this is Cleo's old Bible. Okay, I got another one. I'm not find it. Oh! This is, this is Cleo's Bible. This is Cleo's keyword study Bible that I introduced him to. That's Cleo's Bible right there. Told you she didn't have it. <laughs> this is Cleo's Bible. This is Cleo's Bible. Told you she didn't have it. That's Cleo's Bible. Told him I was going to get to it. And Rose got his other Bible. His daughter and his son did. His daughter and his son. Cleo did all this work. Because he wanted his, his daughter and his sons to have it. They did not want it. Am I right, Eric? Yes. Am I right, Charles? Yes. yes. Am I right, Jeremiah? Yes. Am I right, Caleb? Yeah. They didn't want nothing. Anything that had to do with the word, they did not want it at all. Mm. At the funeral of his, his wife brought me his last two Bibles she found in the house. So they didn't want to have none. This is Cleo's Bible. That Bible is his keyword study Bible. This is his Bible. I gave it to the road. I don't know what they read. I lost the page that time. That's his keyword study Bible. I got another one of his keyword study Bibles at home. What? His daughter and his son still got it. Huh? His daughter and his son still got it. Yeah, they sure did, baby. <laughs> Best believe it. Is any conscious? <laughs> Best believe it. That's what you're saying, right? I'm saying his daughter. Look at me. His daughter and his son ended up getting it. Oh, yes, 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 that's right. That's 
right. You, you, you are right. Your right. His daughter and his son ended up. Uh -huh. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> his son and his daughter, they, it always worked out God's way, don't you? Yep. Yeah, you are this is right. His biological son, his biological daughter, didn't want to have nothing to do with it at all. But his spiritual son and his spiritual Man. daughter died. Spiritual son and his spiritual so daughter. They accepted it with great joy. Mm -hmm. What you say? Yeah. What you say? They accepted it with great joy. They were yes, fighting over it. Yes, believe. But I told John I had. I told John I had. <laughs> so they hated truth, didn't they? Oh, yeah. They hated him because of the, the namesake. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me? Yes. Look at verse number twenty-two. You, he said, I tell you before it come to pass, right? right. He said, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endured to the end shall be saved, right? right. Yes. All right. Look at verse number 34. Yeah. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. Yeah. For I came to send a man at various against his father, the daughter against her, a mother, the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own, his own. Give me the Greek word. Give me the Greek word. Somebody give me the Greek word. It's not no oko no most. What is it? Spell it. O I K I S. Thank you. It's oi kos. It's oi, 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 like you say, oyo. Just don't have an L on it. Oyo and kos. Oi kos. Kos. It means family. Family. That's the word. If you ain't got that word, you got the wrong word. That ain't what I gave you. I gave you oikos. I give you no oiko no more, so no oikos, no man. I'm gonna give you all of that. That word household is family. Amen. That word house, those that hold the house. Mm -hmm. That's the family. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, it's so easy to understand. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that. I didn't say that. Yeah. Jesus said it. Okay? <coughs> Go to Go to Luke chapter 14. This is what y'all don't understand about the Bible. This actually happened to him. You see? Luke 14, verse 26. If any man come to me, take not his father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. When you come to Jesus, when you come to Jesus, many of you pretty probably don't understand it, no. Do you know what you come to when you come to Jesus, Martha Rhonda? Yes or no? Do no. you know? No. Do you know what you no. come? Do you know what you come to when you come to Jesus? Yes or no? No. You Karen? No. Karen, JD, when you come to Jesus, what do you come to? Truth. Thank you very much. You come to truth. You come to truth. They hated him for that truth. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Can you see that? It is true. He stayed to the end. He wouldn't leave truth. See, y'all don't be understanding what I mean. Now you want God don't use the man that God don't gave y'all a personal experience. <laughs> Gotta give me y'all a personal experience. I don't care if my wife don't like it. I'm not leaving. Amen. But what about the other ones that left? What about the other ones that left? Because they husband left. Or they wife left. What about the others? He stayed. Amen. His wife showed you. I hate y'all. Yes. yes. That was manifested. She I hated him. And his wife said, I hate y'all. Y'all took my husband from you. I hate you, Jesus. You took my husband from me. The daughter hated. The son hated. The sister and brother said, I hate you, truth. You took my brother from me. If I only get any of y'all out there watching now, 
And y'all don't left this ministry and y'all don't see it. Y'all, y'all get this totally blind. God will see you straight to hell. They need to repent. Because yes. yes. everybody that left here left here because of another family member that yes. 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 Yeah. Didn't it? Yes. 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 God just manifested to this congregation, to this church. He stayed. That man was devoted to truth. They can't see, can they? No. They think it's me, though. Yes. Amen. They think it's this. They think everybody think it's me. Everybody think it's a man. No, it's not. All of you. They say they understand, they believe it. No, they don't do that. No, 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 they don't. No, they, don't. <laughs> they think you, they, they think y'all following a man. Mm -hmm. yep. They say when you lead a never hold those ministry, you left that ministry, you didn't lead truth. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think we got here? We don't have truth? Yeah. You've been sitting here 10, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13 years. Some of them was raised in. I said raised in this truth. Amen. All they know. Never been to a, never been to a nation, no church at all. What did they walk away from? Truth. Walk away from truth. He endured. He did not love his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his brother, and his sister. He didn't even love his own life, did he? He was a disciple. He was a learner. His notes prove it. And his faithfulness to the ministry, his, faithful, his faithfulness to the word, his faithfulness to the truth manifested itself. He did not leave. He did not. He endured to the end. And his household became his enemies then. It's manifest. It's manifest. Can you read? Yeah. There's nothing on here that pertains to the what? Truth. There's nothing on here that pertains to the truth. They give you some facts about his earthly life, which don't mean nothing to him. Nope. Don't mean nothing to him. Nope. Him working for 20 years at Greek. Him, him working for 20 years as an architectural designer don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. Him being in the National Guard don't mean nothing. 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 Don't mean nothing. Because they ain't number done. If you read Philippians chapter 3, Paul tells you they ain't number done. <laughs> preach, preach. <laughs> they ain't number done. And this is what we don't understand about Christianity. This is what men don't understand. I told y'all, I'm going to show you this. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's go over to, they hated truth. Yes, they did. They hated truth. Let's go to uh, 24 and 9. Matthew 24 and 9. This is what people hate. Mm -hmm. We don't did not leave this ministry. No, he did not. You know how many times he told me he was going to leave his ministry? Three times he told me, I'm going to leave the ministry. Every time I showed him that word of God, he stayed. <laughs> Three times he told me he was going to leave this ministry because of his family. Three times! I believe that the, the coronavirus shot had something to do with him. Because the only reason he got the coronavirus shot was so he could go to a restaurant with his wife. That's why he got the, but see, when you seek to please men, you shall not be the servant of God. Amen. Amen. You can't please men and God at the same time. Okay. He went to the restaurant. He couldn't get in the restaurant and sit down and eat because he didn't have a, the coronavirus shot. He didn't have his car. Mm -hmm. That discouraged him because he wanted to please his wife. So he went and took the shot. He had a heart condition. They told him he should not have took the shot. She ain't gonna say that. She ain't gonna tell that truth. But she wanted him to take the shot. So 
she, he can please her. And they say it. The doctors say it. The nurses say it. Not Dennis. They say it. She not have took that shot. He didn't need that shot. He didn't need his surgery. She got up and walked. I don't know if he made the decision by himself. I don't know if others convinced him and persuaded him to go through with that surgery. But from the doctor's mouth, I heard Amen. and recorded, mm -hmm. and I need that surgery. Matthew 24 and 9. Amen. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. You got to experience this before you die. This is an experience you got to have. I'm not just talking to the eleven, you also talking to the church. Let's go over to. Let's go over to. Luke 19 and 14. Go to Luke 19 and 14. Luke 19 14. This is what I'm preaching right now in theocracy. It says, But his citizens hated him and sent the message after him. Say, we will not have this man to reign over us. What is it they will not want to reign over them? Truth. 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 People do not want truth to control them. <clears throat> they say, preacher trying to control me. They hate truth. They hate the theocracy. They hate theocracy. Amen. Go to 21 and 17. 21 and 17. Amen. Amen. You shall be hated of all, not some, all, all for my name's sake. For what? Yeah, you for say. For truth's sake. Truth. I think it's the word Maseo, M I S E O. It's M I S E O. See what I mean? See, I told you the man wrote down everything. I told you, wrote down everything. I told you. We got it right there, Rose? Yeah, M I S E O. I told you. See? It's the word Maseo, M I S E O. There's some things I remember. It means to be hated, JD. It's all the men, JD. Lord. It means hate, it means opposition against. Mm -hmm. Right? All right. It means to oppose. People think hate it. I hate you, I'm going to kill you. They think it's an act. Mm -hmm. right. No, it's not. It's a spirit. Mm -hmm. It's a spirit. It's an attitude. Yes. Oh, yes. You, can you can be telling me, hey, <laughs> hey, how you doing? No, I'm not you do that at the yeah, hey, hey, that was so funny. Hey, hey, God bless you. Amen. And they oppose against every everything they believe. Amen. That's what hate is. People think hate is. People march around with their face frowned and their fist pumped up in their arm. Threatening. Hate is. How you doing? You all right? Everything is good. But you are opposed to everything I preach, everything I say. You gainsay it, you speak against it, you slander it, don't you? Yep. Yes. You say, I don't believe, don't you? Yes. Right? That's what hate is. <laughs> this is hate. Mm -hmm. You don't find nothing in here said about nothing he did in 18 years in a ministry. 18 years! 18! 18 years! It didn't even exist, for you. 
That's what got me. 18 years, he put 18 years of work in. In the kingdom of God, he put in 18 years in the kingdom. In truth. He left Roman Catholicism and came here and he stayed. He had his ups, his downs, his trials, his tribulations. Three times he told me he was going to leave. And he would come to my house, preacher, I'm going to leave. I just don't believe I should be here. I just don't think that this is the place for me. Leo, so and so, so and so, so and so, so and so, so and so. I remember the first time he left, the first time Leo came to his ministry, he, we had an outing, big <coughs> day. And at the big Nick, he brought his wife. Mm -hmm. I said, Cleo, your wife does not fellowship with us. She don't believe like us, so she shouldn't be here. I said, Look, she's here, her and her daughter. He brought his daughter and her. I said, they can stay. I said, they can stay. But afterwards, in order for her to eat with us, she had a fellowship because she was going to a different denomination. I said, the Bible says, he left. He didn't come back. And I told him that. He didn't come back. I didn't call him. He said that was one of the worst times in his life. He said I would be in that house and I'd be pacing back and forth, back and forth. My wife was like, what's wrong with you? Why are you going back and forth? Why don't you sit out? He said I can't. He came back the next week and that's what he told me. <laughs> and I showed him these yeah. scriptures in that Bible. And that's before day 40 stayed. Yeah. Then it came the time for his daughter to graduate. That was a rough time for him because he had to tear around all of them. He said he was leaving in, but he stayed. Then it came time for her to leave and go out on home. Yeah, yeah, God. Struggle with that again. I said, we about to leave that Leave her alone. She grown. And her wife, but your wife handled it. It was rough for him again. He came back to me, told me he was gone. Third time he came back to me, preacher, that's it. I can't take it no more. I said, I, I just can't take it. I don't believe I should be here. I said, well, Cleo, I'm going to tell you one time. And after this, I'm not talking to you about this no more. He came to my house. He had his books, he had bags, he had everything. He told me he was leaving. And I talked to him again. That was the time he stayed. And he would tell y'all, wouldn't he? Yes. yes. Three times. And four. I the time when he first came. He did not leave because of his wife. He did not leave because of his daughter. He did not leave because of his sisters and his brothers. That's what others done. That's what y'all didn't understand. So God has given you an experience. You have had personal involvement. You have no excuse. He has manifested what enduring to the end means. He don't show you what it means. You can't come and say, I don't know. I don't understand. And it was all because of truth. I don't know nobody who went through more than him. 18 years. Oh, yes, I am. I'm going to keep saying it. 18 years he endured. 18. 18 years he endured. And she didn't listen to one truth on there that he did. That ain't, that ain't evil. Yes, it is. That ain't make this. John 15, 18. John 15. John 15, 18. John 15, 18. Amen. Amen. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. He told Cleo this before it came to pass. Didn't he? And he told and he telling us before it come to pass. Right? Yes. He telling us before it come to pass. Yes. So that when it come to pass, we can know that he is. He said, if you are of the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you and is manifested on his obituary yes. Yes. Verse number 20. Remember the word that I said unto you. 
the servant is not greater than his Lord. Did Jesus' family receive that? No. All right then. Yours ain't going to receive you and, G and, and Cleo's didn't receive that. They didn't receive the truth, did they? No. no, they didn't. We can go to the sixth chapter of the book of Mark and verify that. Remember the word that I said unto you? The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. But this is the last scripture I read before they read us out of that. <laughs> if they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him. See, you cannot love Jesus if you don't know him. You cannot love truth if you don't know him. Because Jesus got the truth from him. Amen. The revelation of Jesus Christ from God. The truth comes from the Father through the Son. And if you don't have a Son, you surely don't have a Father. If you don't believe the Son, you do not have no Father. God is not your Father. So I'm going to show you something in a few minutes. He said, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken, spoken, spoken unto them the truth that I got from my Father, they had, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hated me hated my Father also. You hate the truth. See, J.D., what people believe, J.D., this is what people believe. This is what people believe. They believe that they have a relationship with that white picture hanging up in the Baptist church. That's the Jesus they have in their mind that they have a relationship with. That's what they believe they got a relationship with. The white Jesus they met in a Roman Catholic Baptist denomination or whatever other denomination they was in where his picture was up on the wall. That's who they believe they have a relationship with. A literal white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. Or brown hair and blue eyes. That's who they believe. They believe they believe they have a I'm serious. Yes. I am serious. I mean every word I say. They believe they have a relationship with him, baby. That's who they believe. They believe they have a relationship with him. That's who they have a relationship with. An image in their mind. That's who they have a relationship. They don't have an abstract relationship. And that is with truth. They don't have a spiritual relationship. They have a physical relationship with this image in their mind that that's my Savior. That's who I got, that's who I got a relationship with. They don't have no abstract spiritual relationship with truth. Amen. Cleo had an abstract spiritual relationship with truth. Amen. The way, the truth, and the life. He showed no Amen. They, they even did this obituary. <laughs> they believe that Cleo got a relationship with him. No, he don't. Mm -mm. This is what they believe. They believe the Cleo relationship was with him. No, 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 no. Cleo relationship. Cleo relationship was with him. It was with you. It's what words spoke real. Y'all gotta understand. If I had not come and spoken, that's what Cleo had a relationship with. Cleo had a relationship with verse number 22. Mm -hmm. Spoken. Amen. Cleo had a re relationship with what is spoken. You don't see it. You don't, excuse me. Y'all don't see his relationship with what is spoken. You don't see his relationship. Yeah. He had a relationship with what was spoken. Yeah. You, you don't see it. Yeah. You, don't, you don't see it. Preach, preacher. Cleo got a relationship with what was spoken. Yes, he did. You don't see it? That's what he got a relationship with. 
do, do y'all hear me what I'm saying? Yeah. I said that's what he got. He got dead. What did you say, Jamie? Right now. That relationship with Willis Smoke. I didn't say hey. No. I said Cleo got a relationship with Willis Smoke. That's what he had. That's what he got. He got that relationship right now. He with him right now. So you don't need this. You do. Amen. You need to get with him like he did. It's 18 years. This, this is just 2021. <laughs> Some things in 2021. Thanks, Bridget. You know, got a relationship. Some people got to say, I got a relationship with Jesus. That white picture in their mind. No truth at all. No truth in them at all. Yeah, that relationship is abstract. It got nothing to do with a man. It got to do with truth. It's true. The Bible tell you he's the word made flesh. I wish they had a witness. The Bible say he is the word made flesh. He's not flesh. He's spoken. Spoken. You people don't understand what I'm preaching and teaching. <laughs> what, what did Cleo not leave? That which was spoken? Mm -hmm. Amen. Cleo never left the preacher. <laughs> this sounds like a eulogy, preacher. It is a eulogy. <laughs> it is Cleo's eulogy. <laughs> I know you can hear it. Yes, it is. Cleo's eulogy. It is. Cleo had a relationship with truth. He had a relationship with no white man. Rump blonde hair, blue eyes. Cleo loved the truth. The problem was he was trying to please me. That's what Cleo's problem was. Cleo's problem was he wanted to please flesh. That's what Cleo's problem was. That was his confession. Preacher, I thought I was, I thought I was doing right. I realized. His own words. I realized. I was not doing right. You cannot please everybody. And you can't. One person you show can't please. That's self. Because the more you do for self, the more self going to require. The more you do for self, the more self going to require. The more you do for self, the more self going to require. If I had not come and spoken unto them, John 15, 22. Mm -hmm. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had, they had not had sin. But now, that's what I was getting to with them. But now, I spoke to them. They have no proof of their sin. He that hated me, they hated me, didn't they? Yes. They hated Cleo, didn't they? Yes. They hated you, didn't they? Yes. Yes, they did. They did. Yes. He that hated me, hated my father also. You can't reject truth and call God your father. After mm -hmm. he spoke, after you hear truth and you reject truth, God can't be your father? that hated me, hated my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this come to pass. Oh, there we go again. It's implied. But that the word might be fulfilled that it is written in their law. They hated me without a no cause to hate us, no cause to hate him at all. 17. Here we go right here. 17. Amen. They hated him. Chapter 17. Amen. Are you there? Amen. Verse 14. 17, 14. Amen. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Why? Because of the word. Because of the word. Because of the word. And then he's going to tell us what the word is. 
because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. I pray not that you should have taken Leo out of the world or take the ministry, never on those ministry out of the world, but that you should have keep them from the evil. That's what he did, didn't he? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what he did. Yes. He said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through that truth. Thy word is truth. Set him apart. And he did. Yes. Set him up, sanctify him from what? Father, mother, sister, brother, wife, children, and his own life. That's what we sanctify from. Hello? Amen. Luke 10, 16. Luke 10, 16. Amen. Luke 10, 16. Amen. He said, he that heareth you, heareth me. He that despise you, despise me. He that despise me, does what? Despise him that sent me. Word despise, often teo. That's the word despise. Yeah. It means often teo. Yes. It's the word reject. Mm -hmm. He that reject you, reject me. He that rejected me, rejected him that sent me. Then what did they reject? Truth. The truth that was spoken. The truth that Cleo was writing. The truth that Cleo was studying. They hated it. Yes. Yeah. But they hated the father. Amen. John, 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 let's go to Galatians 4, 6, let's go to John 8, 45. Let's go to John 8, 45. Let's go to John 8, 45. Amen. Amen. And because I tell you the word, mm -hmm. you believe me not. Wife didn't believe. Mm -hmm. Daughter didn't believe. Family didn't believe. He told me to. They seen him writing. All the DVDs he had. All the notes he had. He had a library. He did work. He did truth. He, and because I tell you the truth, you believe me not? Which of you convinces me of sin? If I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Therefore, there ye therefore hear not, because ye are not from God. God is not your father. That's why you don't hear the word. That's because that's because that you don't hear the word. God is not your father. He's not from God. Amen. Galatians 4 16. Read Galatians 4 16. Read Galatians 4 16. Read Galatians 4 16. Amen. Amen. Galatians chapter 4, verse 16. Amen. Galatians 4, and verse 16. He said, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Right. Who is going to become your enemy? When you do what? Tell, tell the, the truth. truth. Tell those of your own oh, family the truth. Who is going to become your enemy? They are going to become your enemy. Amen. Well, who said that? Jesus said, A man's enemies or a man's foes 
shall be they of his own household when he tell them the truth. He said, I tell you before it come to pass that when it come to pass you may believe that I am. No! No! No, Jesus! Not my mother! No, Jesus! Not my father! Please, Jesus! Not my husband! No, Jesus! No! Not my wife! No, Jesus! No, Jesus! Not my own children! Please, Jesus! Anybody but my son! Oh, Lord, please! Anybody but my husband! Oh Lord, please, anybody but my daughter. Please, Lord. Not my father, not my mother. Please, Lord. That's what we be saying. Yeah. Oh Lord, please. I don't think I can handle it. You take my husband, my wife from me. You take my daughter, I gotta tell them the truth. They're not gonna love me no more. You cannot be my disciple. Because you love them more than you love me. You cannot be my disciple. You cannot be my disciple. You cannot be my disciple. You love them more than you love me. And that's what we say. That's exactly what we say. Oh Lord, please. Not my grandchild. Please, Lord. Oh Lord, no. You know, they're so cute. They know they're so funny. They're so pretty. They're so handsome. Please, he said, you can't be my disciple. Well, when you tell the truth, especially the family, mm -hmm. you come in. Yeah. These people will say that. Everybody <laughs> bring this down here. He only needs to cherish. He yeah, 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 only yeah. needs to cherish yeah. his memory. Yeah. Two children: yeah. Devin, Sean, Gillette of LaRose, Louisiana; Michelle, Gillette of Fort Myers. Those was Cleo's yeah. enemies. Grandchild of his son, Kevin, Christina, probably don't know the Lord. Four grandchildren of his deceased son, Keith, he did. His wife, Carolyn, Calvin, Kenneth, Kenesha, Kenita, two brothers. Jerry, Paulette, Gillette, Richardson Park, Illinois, that's his brother. Pauletta, that's the woman sitting up there with her evil self. The one who was sitting right up there in the front, leaving her hands and can't move. Mm. Those are the ones he was taking back and forth to the dock. Jerry and Pauletta Gillette of Richardson Park, Illinois, was the ones he was taking back and forth to the doctor, taking them grocery shopping, taking them pay their bills, doing everything for them. And they got a grown daughter in the house. She was sitting up there next to them. <clears throat> These are the ones that hated him. Norma William Hill of Chicago, Illinois, Tanya Briggs, his evil, wicked sister, the one who hugged Carol of LaGrange, Illinois, can't tell her nothing because she got two dollars in her pocket. Sister-in-law, Juanita Gillette, that's in she in Ontario, California. Sister-in-law, Sheila Gillette, of Chicago. Brother-in-law, Jack Glory, all of these hated him. Brother-in-law, Elber Lewis, Desmond Now, sister-in-law, sister-in-law, secretary. Banks of Chicago, a host of other relatives and friends. Only scripture they got on here is Psalm 23. That was not his favorite song. But what's not clear your favorite passage of scripture? I can't think of what it, what it was, but God gave it to me. I'll give it to you. He calls me to remember. They hate it, clear. They hate it. Everybody on this earth, everybody on the hate it. Why? I found them in, in, in one of his bags. What you want to have? Except Yeah, except one need. Thank you. I found them in one of his bags. Mm -hmm. Hey. A uh, family reunion t shirt. Well, it's two. 19, was it 1999 or something. Old family. Maybe before they might, maybe have been. Hmm. But hmm. he did attend family reunions. They hate it. Okay. They go to the family reunion store. So they stopped sending them t shirts because he didn't attend family reunions. They hated that man. They didn't hate him, did they? What did they hate? The truth. They don't know what they hated. 
Is ain't that person ain't true? Yes. But in the down in the house, the truth, church. I love y'all and I keep telling y'all, they hate the truth. They hate God. You can't have Jesus. You can't have Jesus, the Father, without Jesus. Now turn your Bible to 13. Many people say, well, God talked to me. I don't have to have no preacher. You are lying. God is not speaking to no man without preaching. I don't care what that man say, he, he got to show me in scripture. I bet you I can. I bet you I can show you the scripture. And I'm going to show you the scripture. I'm going to show you what Jesus said. I'm going to show it. Look at John chapter 13, verse number 20. Amen. John 13, 20. Amen. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I see. Right? Yeah, right. It says, whomsoever I see. This is not talking about the only the eleven. When I looked it up and studied it, it says anyone, anybody. He says, whomsoever I see. He knew he was going to send more than the apostles. He knew he was going to send preachers. After the apostles died, he knew that. He God. He knew the apostles was going to die. Okay. Go to Matthew 10 for Go to Matthew chapter 10, verse number 4. Well, Matthew chapter 10, verse 4. Amen. Amen. It's the beginning of his ministry, right? Yes. yes. Right? Yes. All right. Matthew 10, verse 40. Right? Amen. Yes. Amen. It's the beginning of his ministry. Right? right. Amen. This is the 12 he chose. Right? right? You look at the beginning of the chapter. Exegetical. You look at the beginning of the chapter. chapter. He says, the Lord called to him his 12 disciples. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, heal all manner of sickness, all manner of disease. The names of the twelve apostles are these. The first of Simon is called Peter, Andrew was brother, James, son of Zebedee, John his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew the publican, James, the son of Aphelius, Lebeus, surnamed Stadius, Simon the Canaanite, Judas, Scarlet, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth, commanded them to say. Right? Yeah. Get to verse number 40, right? Yes. Get to verse number 40. He said, He that received you, received me. He that received me, he that received it, me, received him that sent me. How is they going to receive Jesus? Through those whom he sent. So simple. Amen. Okay? We go to Luke 10, 16. You know, it's quiet. Oh, good Lord. Oh, Lord. Luke 10, 16. 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 In Luke 10, 16. Yeah, did it. He that heareth you, heareth me. He that despises you, mm -hmm. despises me. He that despises me, despises him that sent me. Right? right. Yes. Then in the verse number 17, it says that the 70 <coughs> returned. Right? Yes. So he sent out 70, didn't he? Yes. yes. In the beginning of his ministry, didn't he? Yes. yes. Along with the 12, didn't he? Yes. And he said, the 70, if they hear you, they're hearing me. If they despise you, they despise me. If they despise me, they despise the Father that sent me. Right? Yes. So we got the 12, and then we got the 70. Mm -hmm. Right? They God, the Lord. When we get to 1320, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the 70s ministry is finished, isn't it? 
Yes. When we get to John 13, 20. Yes. John 13, 20. And then the 17th mission is finished. No, Lord. These whom Jesus has finished sending out is the beginning of the church. Right? Yes. yes. Okay. We go to John 20. We go to John 20 and 21. We go to John 20 and 21. Twenty and twenty-one. Then said Jesus unto them. Well, let's look at 19. Then the same day and evening, being the first day of the week. <coughs> what is the first day of the week, Ethan? Sunday. Thank you. Then the same day and evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. To the eleven, right? Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, not to the eleven, to the ten, because Thomas is not there. So Thomas is not there. So you get down to verse number 24, it says, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Bitterness, was not with them when Jesus came. Amen. Amen. So it's ten of them there. So then, then the same day at evening, then the first day of the week, and the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Came Jesus and stood in the midst, and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said, when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again. I'm going to read it very slow. Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, so sin. I, you. Yeah. So when he sent them, when he sent them, whoever received them is receiving him. Right? Yes. yes. Whoever received him, them, is receiving him. Receiving him through them, they're receiving the Father. Amen. Amen. All right. Look at Galatians 4.14. Galatians 4.14. This is exegetical preaching. Yes. This is theocracy. Yes. Okay. Let's look at Galatians chapter 4 and verse 14. Amen. Galatians 4.14. Galatians 4.14. It says, are you there? Amen. 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 And my temptation, which was in my flesh, you despise not, nor reject it, but receive me as an messenger from God, that is, that is, that's how you received me when you met me. Amen. That's how everybody received me when they met me. Amen. <clears throat> Whether they acknowledge it or not. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no. You like that, don't you, baby? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to read it again. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, yeah. you despise not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nor reject. Oh, yeah, yeah. But receive yeah. me as an messenger. <coughs> that ain't the loss. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. No. I, you ain't never seen an angel before. No, I have. No, you can't go there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, man. The 
change. Has an angle out. That ain't nothing but a mess to the angel of the church. You receive me as a messenger from God, even as Christ was a messenger from God. Wow. Mm. 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 Okay. We're through. Let's go to First Thessalonians before we. Let's go to First Thessalonians before we. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians Amen. Amen. This is actually getting called theocracy preacher. So y'all can know what this is. Yes. First Thessalonians 4. You only gonna hear the word of God for the preaching. I'm going to do You got it? Amen. He therefore then despises it. Despise it, not man. Mm -hmm. But God. Who hath also given unto us his what? Holy oh, Spirit. Mm. Look at John 5.23. Look at John 5.23. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Look at John 5.23. Oh, Lord. Now this is going to throw somebody for a new thing. <laughs> They're really going to get hot now. <laughs> that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. But wait a minute. What if you don't honor the preacher that the Son sent? You don't honor the Son. And then you don't honor the Father. Preach! See, we don't have to honor him. We don't have to respect him. Let me read it again. That all should honor the son. The only way you can honor the son is through honoring whom he sees. You can't honor the son if you don't honor whom he sees. Amen. You gotta honor whom he see. Yeah. He that honor the son, mm -hmm. that all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father, which hath sent him. Look at John twelve forty four. Jesus Christ.
44, right? Yes. Do that go with 1320? Most certainly. Yes, it does. Yeah. The same Jesus. It ain't no different Jesus. No, it's not. He that believeth on me, believeth not on me. So when he said, very, very, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, verse 20, receiveth me. <laughs> he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. He said in 1244, Jesus cried and said, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. But in 1320 says, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. Mm -hmm. He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. You don't believe me when you when I say whomsoever I send receiveth me. You're not believing him, Carol. You believe in the Father who sent him. Mm -hmm. Everything that Jesus said, church, you not believe in Jesus. You believe in on him that what he got, he got from the Father. Mm -hmm. That's what you believe. So when you believe in him, you believe in the Father. Right? That's right. He that believeth on me, believeth not on me. For I've been taught all my life I got to believe on Jesus. No, you got to believe in him that what he said and did, the Father sent him to say and do. So you really believe in the Father, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that seeth me. He that seeth me, seeth him that seeth me. Wait, 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 wait. He that seeth me, seeth him that seeth me. Wait, 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 wait. So who did Cleo's wife see? Who did Cleo wife see? She seen the truth. She seen the father. Mm -hmm. She said the son and she said the father. See, that's what she rejected. What you say? That's what she rejected. What Who she did said. Michelle see? She, she seen the son and she seen the father and Cleo. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Because see, they're looking for a literal right man to show up at. Yeah. They're looking for him. They don't, you see them abstractly, you see them spiritually, you see them in truth. Amen. <laughs> They hated what they saw. They hated the son. They hated the father. He that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I used to be loved. I said I used to be loved. But they thought when they were seeing me, they were seeing the devil now. But before, when they saw me, they saw Christ. Now, they don't laugh, they see the devil. Hello? Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. But in the beginning, they received me as if I was an angel from God. And the same thing the Galatians did to Paul. So Paul came, they said they received Paul as if he was an angel, a message from God. When those uh, 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 Messianic Jews come down there and tell them they had to keep a law, they forgot about Paul. Same thing. Look at verse 44. Boy, y'all need to go read me. That's why I'm reading them slow. Y'all y'all with me? Y'all with me? Let's run it through again. Sorry I got no seatbelt. Show me the buckle down. <laughs> this is going to get you right here. He that believed in me, believed it not on me, but on him that seeth me. He that seeth me, seeth not, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. When I come back, I'm coming to judge the world. When he come back this time, he on his way back. See the tornado? I see you. He on his way back. Y'all with me? Forty-eight. Everybody there. Amen. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words have what? How many do we got to judge him? One. 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 And that's the father. You got one that judges you. Because you're really not rejecting my words, you're rejecting the father's words that he gave me to give you. 
Amen. So when you don't, so when you reject my words, which is the words of Jesus that He got from the Father, the same words of Jesus preach the same words I preach, same truths I tell. So when you reject the word from me, you rejected the word from the Son. You rejected the word from the Father. God is not your Father. No, He's not. No, he's no, he's not. not. So so. He that rejected me received not my words. Wait a minute. Go to 13, verse. 13, 20. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is keep flipping back and forth. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that received it, whomsoever I see. Mm -hmm. Whomsoever is the person. The person I see. So you go back to 48. Mm -hmm. He that rejected me and receiving not my words from the person I sin, right? Yes. And have one that judges him. The word that I have spoken through the person I sin, that same word shall judge him in the last day. Big job. You best believe the word gonna judge. Yes, sir. Not me. Nope. The word I spoke and taught. Right. That's the word that's gonna judge. What's going to judge him is John 13, 20, Matthew 10, 40, Luke 10, 16, John 20, 21, Galatians 4, 14, 1 Thessalonians 4, 8, John 5, 23, and John 12, 44, and 49. Now, they say, well then, God will only speak through uh, the preacher. God can speak through everybody. No, he cannot. God cannot speak through nobody else no more. The Father has put all things in the hand of the Son, right? right he has have given everything over to the Son, right? right that the Son may be all, in all, and over all, right? Yes. So if the Father, if the Father deviates from that and speaks through Mama Ronda or woman, then that's not God, is it? No, 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 no. That means he has deviated, he has changed, right? right. And the Bible says he is immutable, right? right? He don't change. Yeah. Also, the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Yeah. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he not said, shall he not do it? Have he not spoken, shall he not make it good? Right? right. I'm going to teach that. I'm going there now. I'm just quoting. Mm -hmm. So, God can only speak through whomever well, the Son only speaks through whomever he's saying. Because the Father has given all things over to the Son. All things is given over to the Son. So you hear people say, well, God can use anybody he wants to use. No, he cannot. God cannot use who, who, whoever he wants to use. God can only use, the Father is only going to use those whom the Son is saying. Right? 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 right. right. The, fa the Father cannot do anything outside of what He has already set up. Right? Because you turn your Bible, you turn your Bible to Psalms 119, 89. Okay? Well, you know, preach about the scripture. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. My pastor, give me some scripture. Yes, he is. So go to Psalms 119, 89. Right? Amen. Amen. When we get to Psalm 119, right? Yeah. Amen. It says, Forever is what? Psalms 1989. What does it say? Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in hell. The word. The word. So he cannot deviate. Because the word is settled, right? Yes. 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 Right? Yes. yes. Have I ever gave you that word before? Yes. I did? Yes. yes. The word? Yes, he did. It's the word not solved. Yes. N A T? Yes. S A B? Yes. What did I tell you it mean? Okay, I gave it to you already. Okay. <laughs> Good. Established. Right. Keep the guard. Right? Good. Is that all I gave you? Upright. That's what I want. Amen. Amen. What else? Huh? 
Thank you. E R E C. I just want to make sure I gave y'all all of these I got, right? Mm -hmm. How about present? Present. Is present in heaven, right? Amen. Right stand and put it in heaven. That's right. You best believe it. It's the best state. So he can't change heaven. No, no. What, is, what is revealed belong to us, right? Mm -hmm. So he cannot deviate from what is revealed. Talk to me, church. Amen. Because no, okay? no, okay? no, it's already established. Right. 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 right? It's in its best state, right? Yes. So, so it don't need to change, right? No, right. No. All right, so I'm giving y'all scripture. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving you scripture, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So God cannot mm -hmm. deviate yes. from what he has already appointed, established, erected, right. presented, upright in his best state. Is in heaven, right? Right. right? I didn't say that. The psalmist said that. Right. All right. I say God cannot speak to nobody else. Then I say, mm -hmm. so you got to go through the preacher, right? Right. 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 And the preacher got to be sent by Jesus, right? Right. Got to be preaching the same thing that Jesus preached, right? Yes. yes. He got to be hated, right? Yes. He got to be persecuted, yes. right? Yes. All right then. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. Oh, yeah. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. Amen. Amen. If you don't argue with me, you're going to argue with the Word. If you're going to argue with the Word, go to Hebrews chapter 1. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. I'm finna prove it. He can't talk to nothing else but through the preach. I'm going to prove it, man. Whitfield. Let's go. Now. You got to pay attention. Yes. Amen. We have verse number one. Amen. Yes. It says, God, what? What does it say? God, you say, God, do what it say? Thank you, J.D. Thank you, J.D. Thank you, J.D. Thank you, J.D. I'm teaching the young man this right now. It say, God. Yes. Pause. Yes. What that common mean is, okay. I'm getting ready to say something. God, yeah. understand yeah. who this is coming from. It's a God. Paul. Yeah. Say, God, wait. Okay. It's coming from God. It's coming from the Father. It's coming from the, if it's coming from the Father, it's coming from the Son. And it's with the power and it's with the Holy Spirit. Say, God. God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Say, God, pause. Then right next, right after God is saying, who? Yeah. Jesus. Then you got an A right there, don't you? Right. Yes, yes it do. Do it. Then said, at sundry times and at dabbles and Right? Yes. We go yes. to that A, right? Yes. We look in the margin, right? Yes. Right. So it says, God, we go back to the scripture, right? Yes. Say, God, comma, who, and we don't read at sundry times and in divers back. We don't read that. After, after who, we go read eight, right? Yes. Yes. Amen. So it reads, God, who, in many parts and in many ways, we go back to the scripture, right? Yes. We pick it up at the word spake. Yes. Spake, I'm going to read it very slow. In time passed unto the fathers by the prophets, comma, wait, have in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom the Son also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, upholding all things 
by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent, excellent name than the angels. God don't speak to nobody, speak through nobody but his son. And his son speaks through whomsoever he sees. So God can't speak through a cow. He can't speak through nothing, no dog, and no cat. He can't use anybody or anything he wanted to. The only ones that can speak the word of God is whosoever I see. Well, God can use anybody. No, He can't. He can't. He only do. Let me see. And He told you who He said. He said pastors and teachers. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's how God is speaking now. Through pastors and teachers. I don't care what nobody says. Okay. You want to prove it? Let's go over to the book of, of the Amen. So I'm going to give you so many scriptures plus your vets. People want to talk stupid to me. Well, God can use anybody. No, he cannot. And before you go there, hold on. Before you go there, let, let me give you the words out of God's mouth. Okay? Go to 17th chapter, book of Matthew. Okay? Before we go there, let me give you the words out of God. These are the most famous, these are the most famous two prophets there was in Israel. These were the most famous two prophets there was in Israel. If Israel had any respect for any prophet, it was these two. Okay. Let's go to Matthew. That's what God did. Let's go to Matthew chapter 17. Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 17, okay? Amen. All right. Matthew chapter 17. Y'all with me? Amen. Y'all with me? Amen. Okay. Amen. All right. Well, the people be talking, talking to me like I'm crazy or trying to make me think they profound and know something. And I know they don't be knowing what they're talking about. After six days, Jesus taking Peter, James, and John. These are going to be his what? Witnesses. Witnesses. He took. He take it. These are going to be his witnesses. They ain't taking them for nothing. He's just not going to take them up there just to take them and say, let me show you something so he can show off. <laughs> take them to be witnesses. Amen. After six days, Jesus taking Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringing them up into a high mountain, sanctified, mm -hmm. apart. Common was transfigured before them, his face did shine as the sun, his raiment and was white as the light. Period. Behold, there appeared unto him the most famous two prophets of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. Moses and Elias, or Elijah, talking with him. Then answered Peter, as always, and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you will, let us make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elias. While he yet spake, hello? Mm -hmm. Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, right? Mm -hmm. Behold, a voice out of the cloud would say, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him! Amen. Nobody else. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and how are we going to hear him? Through whomsoever he sinned. There's the only way you're going to hear. And he has spoken to us in these last days by his son. So a son said, if I sin, you don't receive them. You don't receive me. And if you don't receive me through whom I sin, God is not your father. And he ain't talking through nobody else. He's going to come through the preacher. Let's go to the let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. I'm sick of these people trying to go, well, God can use anything. Man, these the last days. He did that in many parts and in many ways what the fathers did. Yeah. Not in the last days he don't do that. No. You let go, God, he God. And see, this is why this is how they spook y'all. A spook people. Well, he God. 
And nothing else is possible with God. Anything God <laughs> God is nothing impossible with God. God can do anything. But no, no, you don't took that scripture out of context then. Yes. Yeah. That's talking about saving man. Right? Yes. See, that's what I'll be talking about. That's not exegetical preaching. That's not context preaching. That's not exegesis and, the and theocracy preaching. That's you just know a scripture that you try to justify and make yourself not to obey the preacher, isn't it? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. God cannot talk to no, any, talk to and speak to no anybody. He can't. He has spoken to us in these last days by his soul. <laughs> whom he has appointed heir of all things. Yes, That's what I was telling y'all. Then in, in the 17th chapter of the book of Matthew, before he even got on the cross, he told all of us, this is my beloved son here. He him. <laughs> and then after the son died, go back on the right hand side of God. He led captivity, captivity, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. I'm not trying to prove myself. I'm trying to prove the word. I'm proving true. Amen. I love the truth. I need to prove myself. Amen. All I need to do is preach. Amen. How can you preach except you were sent? Amen. Preach. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. He said, Learn to every one of us is given grace. I'm at 4 7. I'm sorry. Amen. Mm. He said, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. He gave gifts unto what? Me. Men. He gave gifts unto what? Me. Men. He gave gifts unto men. He's going to tell you what the gifts is. Amen. He gave gifts unto men. Now he, now that he ascended, Jesus the Christ, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended, Jesus the Christ, is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he ain't no might, that he filled all things. Right? Amen. Right. He gave some apostles. Go back to verse number seven. What are apostles? Yeah. Yeah. Gifts yeah. unto yeah. men. Yeah. Gave yeah. gifts unto men. Right. Then it tells you what he did, mm -hmm. how he gave the gift. Say he came down, then he went up, then yes, he, he said he ascended. That means he came down, right? No, no. I mean he, he went up, right? I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Say that. Say that. Uh, he had already came down. Then it said he had already was sent. Sorry, he was sent by the Father, right? Yes. Amen. He was sent. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. He he was sent. Right? Yes. After he was sent, he went back to where he came from. Amen. Talk back with me. Amen. Right? Right? That's right. He said, but he descended first. Right? Yes, he also descended first. Right. After he was sent. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended into the lower parts of the earth is the same also that ascended up yes. far above all heavens. That he filled all things, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. And he gave apostles. Apostles are what? Yes. 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 You go back to verse 7. Yes. It says, he, verse 8, yes. gave yes. gifts. Then it comes to verse 11. He said, gave some what? Apostles. Gave some what? Apostles. Gave some what? Gave some what? What? Pastors. That's the only thing left is pastor and teacher. He gave them. That's a gift. Well, if you don't believe that, you don't believe that, you don't believe the Son. You don't believe the Son, you don't even believe that the Father sent him the first time, do you? No. So you want to talk stupid to me, try to make me think that you're so profound. Yeah. Me, they do, that's how they talk to me. Try to make me think they're profound. Well, anything is possible with God. No, 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 you don't take that scripture out of context. You don't understand even what you're saying. It's for men to be saved. All things are possible with God 
to save men, whether they are rich or poor. That's the context of that scripture. Amen. Because they say, who shall? Y'all want to look at it? Sure. He said, who shall be saved? Yeah. <laughs> That's the context of rich and poor. A rich man, they believe that the rich man could be saved, didn't they? Yes. Go to Matthew. God help us, your Lord. Lord help us. Please help us, Lord. See, we in the last days, church. We in the falling away. People are falling away from God. They do not want to be up under no authority. Let's go to 19, like I said. Verse number 16. The Lord. Verse 16. Are you there? Amen. Oh, one oh, came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Right? Right. He said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but what? One. That is who? God. But if you will enter, right? Yeah. He didn't say have, right? No. Because you can't have eternal life, right? No. You got to enter into it, right? right. You got to enter into enter into life. I'm reading and I'm studying some things. You know what enter into life is? The kingdom of God. Amen. You can put the kingdom of God. Amen. Enter, enter into life. That's the kingdom of God. Underline, enter into life. You're always moving fast, man. Y'all don't never listen to what I'm saying. You just stop writing. You don't even know what you're writing. You underline, enter into life. That's the kingdom of God. You underline, enter into life. And you write, kingdom of God. It's Matthew 19, verse number 16. That's just another way of saying kingdom of God. Enter into, enter into life. Just another way of saying kingdom of God. Amen. He didn't say half. If Jesus asked the question based on what the, the, the uh, if Jesus asked the question based upon what the one said, then the one knew what he was talking about. The one didn't even know what he was talking about. You get that the one, the one say half. Jesus said you can't have it until you enter. So he wasn't even in. He want to have it. Yeah. Like, hey, son, excuse me, you ain't even in yet. Yeah. You're not even in the kingdom. How are you going to have something you're not even in the kingdom? He said, I, I want to have eternal life. He said, wait, 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 wait. Slow down, Jim. <laughs> you ain't even in here yet. <laughs> uh, what? What? That's how we are. Yes. Because we think we good. <laughs> We, can, we, we deserve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Amen. So you got to stay in the context, right? right? So all of this context we're talking about is eternal life, man. Yes. So we can't go out here and say, well, God can speak to a dog. <laughs> this ain't got nothing to do with a dog. <laughs> the subject kills entering, yeah. not having. But no. Jesus corrects his diction. Yes. He does. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Mm. 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 Y'all ready? Y'all messed up, ain't you? Yep. Yep. The first thing he did wrong was what? Mm. Huh? Good. Good. Well, I hear, no, no, no. The first thing he did was what in verse 16? What good thing shall I do? What he, so what did he do wrong? He assumed himself to be somebody that could do something good. He assumed himself to be somebody good and another thing he did wrong. He assumed he had a Yeah, he assumed he had a bill. He thought he could do it. He thought he could do it. And another thing he did, he did it wrong. Come on, one more thing. He asked for self. Yeah. Yeah. He asked for self. He had thought he would have ability, fleshly ability. Right, right? here. Yeah. So he needed to do good. So he yeah. acted for self. Right. Yeah. That's how we is, right? Yes. He acted for self. That messed him up. Yeah. He acted for self. Mm -hmm. Ah. He got an ego problem. He think he's somebody. Preacher, that is a black man speaking, is it not? That is a black man speaking. <laughs> In verse 16. <laughs> What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? First thing he's looking out for himself. Think he's good and think he got built. 
you just said it to them. <coughs> All right, I got Jesus asking one question. Why call you me good? Well, I know you can't answer. There is none good but one that is God. Mm -hmm. But if you will, if, it's a based on the condition, mm -hmm. if you will enter into the kingdom of God, right? right. That's what life is, eh? Mm -hmm. Ain't life in the kingdom of God? Yeah. Yeah. It's the only place it is. I'm reading the book. I was reading it yesterday. I'm reading it right now. I'm reading it right now. And they say all of these terms. And I say that term in it. That's what reminded me when I was reading it yesterday. So yeah. Enter into life. All these terms. I'm going to read it to you and teach you. Yeah. All these terms are talking about the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. In the kingdom of God, that's the only place there is what? Life. And what kind of life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the only place where there is eternal life. You in the kingdom of God right now, and in the kingdom of God, you are being prepared for eternal life. Cleo was in the kingdom of God, and God prepared him for eternal life. What did he prepare him with? Preach. Truth gets you ready for eternal life. Truth gets you ready for eternal life. Truth pro toy mazo you. Truth pro o rizzo you. Truth apple rizzo you. Truth cot artizo you. Truth head toy mazo you. Truth! Verse 18. He said unto him, Which? What command? Verse 18 said, which? Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. What is that? Thou shalt do no murder. What is that? Amen. What is that? That's true. That's true. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Amen. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What's that? That's true. true. Yeah, true. That's true. My, uh, true. Thou shalt not steal. Come on now. True. Thou should not be up. Come on now. That's true. That's true. I'm your father and your mother. That's true. That's true. That means place a value upon you. Mm -hmm. That don't mean do everything they tell you to do. Mm -hmm. White man taught you that. Mm -hmm. White man taught you that. I ain't ashamed to say it. Mm -hmm. That don't mean do everything they tell you to do. That's, That's true. the word tomorrow. That means to place a value upon you. Mm -hmm. how, much, how much is they worth to you? <coughs> tomorrow comes from today. That means to place a value upon them. I gave you that already. I taught you that. How valuable, how valuable are they to? I gave you that already. You say you should love your neighbor as yourself. That's true. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I steal? Jesus said unto them, if you will be perfect, <clears throat> tell us, right? Mm -hmm. You be complete, right? Yes. Go and say that you have. Give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven. <clears throat> Come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, heard what saying, y'all? He is good. Thou will be perfect. Good. That thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. That was something he had to what? Do. Cut. That's what man don't want to do. Cut. Mm -hmm. He don't want to go and say, oh, what do you want to do, Jay? Cut. He want to come back. He want to buy and sell. Cut. He don't want to go and sell. He want to buy and sell. He don't want to go and sell. You don't want to go and say it. We want to buy and say But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. What was he doing? Cry. He went by the cell. He went by the cell. Right? Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say, verily I say unto you, Mm -hmm. Is talking about a rich man, ain't it? Yes. yes. Is that the context? Yes. 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 Talking about a rich man seeking to have eternal life. Mm -hmm. right. Jesus telling them, you can't have it until you enter. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus tells them you can't have eternal life until you enter eternal life. And you know what? I'm right telling you, oh, in order for them to enter into, into eternal life, what do you got to do, Carol? You got to go and sell. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to the poor. Thou shalt have children in heaven. No way. Hallelujah. I guess it. Now he just entered oh, into life, y'all. Wait a minute. <laughs> what do you got to do, Jamie? He got to find a truth to sell it now. Amen. He got to find a truth to sell it now. Yes. Once he enter in, uh, but there's something else he got to do. Indeed. God. He just enter now. Right. Oh, he got to remain. He got to abide until the end. Yeah. Amen. Well, he got to endure. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. He went and sold all he had yes, yes. for the kingdom. Yes, yes. He sold all he had. He got rid of mother, father, sister, brother, wife, children, and his life also. Yes, and he didn't yes, do it to the end. Amen. He to do it to the end. He can't go. You best believe it. Once you find the truth, you buy and sell. You buy the truth, and sell it. If you buy the truth, you go and sell everything that you got, right? All that done. And then you buy the truth. And then you buy the truth, you hold on to that. And you hold on to that. You keep it. Jesus, I mean, Cleo, go, he went and he sold it. He sold it out. That's why they didn't put nothing on here on his obituary about the ministry. Because he sold it. They want to remember him God. not as he is, God. but as he was. Thank you very much. They want to child. remember him how he was. <laughs> he was what? God. You best believe it. They want to remember him before he how he was yes. before he came mm -hmm. to the ministry. They acknowledge on the picture that he was changed. Yes, they did. Because they didn't mention his change. They did not mention his change at all. What you say, Eric? Yeah, remember if we all stop on God. God. 2003. Thank you very much. God. That's, that's all they were from 2003 all the way to life. That what? What you say, JD? What you say, JD? That's before he entered into life. Hey, preacher, you notice that says life reflections, but it don't mention nothing about grace. Preach! Amen! 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 Right. Don't say nothing about grace. Right. See, he bought the truth. Uh -huh. And he sold it not. He did. He got wisdom to that. Yes, he 
He followed instruction to them. And he had understanding that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's real. Right. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Hello? Amen. Ain't that deep? Yes. Yes, it is. Leo's eulogy, Charles? Yep, that's what it is. Woo! Hey. It take me five hours to preach Cleo Jr. No two minutes, huh? Uh, no, no two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> two minutes ain't gonna do me nothing. Now when I stop talking about Cleo, man was devoted to him. Man was loyal. Man was devoted to man was loyal. Man, God kept him. Y'all seen God keep that man. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I just don't really know what he went through with his family. Boy, he suffered a long time. 18 years. You gotta understand 18 years. He was loyal. He was dedicated. He devoted to him some narrow hope those minutes. He gonna do him some narrow hope those minutes. He loved the truth. Yes, he did. He knew it. Yes. I speak as a foolish man. He said I've been to college. He said I don't have all kind of authority on me. He could have done it. He said I don't have all kind of education, all kind of authority over me. Look at his, 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 his obituary and see it. He said, I have never had, I speak as a foolish man, a professor or a man of authority to explain to me like you explain. I, I never had no man, man to explain life and break life down to me like you have. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't care nothing about your voice being loud. Not even at all. He said, I'll be listening to your words. And his proof of him listening to my words, right you pick up one of these. I mean, look at that. I was reading this book. He wrote down some things I just said. Yeah. I mean, anything I said, he wrote down. I mean, everything. You pick up one of these books, you just flip the tape. Maybe, maybe I might do that. Maybe I might just do that. I just, something just came to me. Maybe I might just get each one of y'all. Let me I'm, I'm a, I'm a meditate on. Maybe I might just get each one of y'all a photo. Let me see. I'll give y'all just a copy. Each one of y'all copies on this. Yeah, so y'all can see I take notes. <laughs> he broke down everything. I, I'm, I mean, I'll be reading this note and I'll be like, why did he write this? <laughs> I'll read his note. And I'm like, why did you write this? I mean, what was, I said, what was the purpose of it? What, I'm like, what was the purpose of him writing this? I just said, what did I do with that blueprint? He, he write, he write, he write anything. Like, like the one I did on, I did on education. I, 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 I did one on education. This is what he wrote. You live in your mind. And that's just something I'm saying doing preaching. Mm -hmm. He wrote, you live in your mind. He wrote, uh, nomadic one. No need, uh, no need morals and attitude. I mean, the things he write, I mean, it just amazed me. I, I did it, hypocrisy. 2015. Man, look at him. Like, like I said this, no, he just wrote this. Flesh does not have needs. Flesh has lust. Flesh wanting or lusting, double vision, looking at wanting or lusting. He, he wrote that down. He said he wrote down, flesh don't have needs. Yep, flesh and does not have needs. Right here it says, needs are wisdom, understanding, knowledge, life. See what I mean? This is his hypocrisy. I remember I taught on this. Uh, yeah, that's what here go his, <laughs> this dude, this symbol, to hide under a false appearance. I mean, this was when everybody was there. This is his hypocrisy. Good God Almighty. I can't believe this, y'all. I'm serious. He got, I mean, the way he takes notes is just amazing. He went in, went in strong, so he got all the word for hypocrisy. Look how neat he is. Look how neat he is. Look how competent he is. And you can take his notes, man. No direct endeavor. No direct answer or intent. Seeking a favorable opinion. I mean, he just write down everything I said. 
a crackhead does not go. I talk, he wrote down every word that came out of my mouth. A crackhead does not. I mean, it just amazed me. Where you got that at? He said, this party said, uh, though he no longer possessed the power to do so, the hypocrite, on the other hand, is quite satisfied with himself, has no desire to repent of the sin so deeply lodged in his heart. And he got, has no desire. No, excuse me. I got the wrong thing. It said the, the formal truthfulness in the open center, however, is counterbalanced by the fact that the hypocrite recognizes at least a divine law and judgment. The open center. He said a crackhead does not know. He don't. The open center. Crackhead don't know. And that's what I said. And he wrote it down. I don't care what I said, he wrote down. This is this is Mark, this is can you refer Mark 7, 2015, folks. I remember I taught this. Who was over there? I know that. Oh yeah. When I taught him his hypocrite. Yeah. I hammered on hypocrite. You know? Yes, you did. I'm mm -hmm. showing everybody what hypocrisy is. He need to go back. He got, I mean, he just amazed. He just amazed. Principles, the measure, the measure. And, and live by guidelines, carnal mindset, and outward actions by vain words, philosophy, and deceit. I mean, he wrote that everything, everything, everything. I'm not playing. He wrote down everything, everything. The man amazed me. The man amazed me. He bought this truth. He did not say it. He got this truth. That was it. He wanted it so bad for his wife, so bad for his daughter, so bad for his son. He ain't like his wife, mom. Now, that's, that's the thing you can understand. That's what I was trying to explain to him. It wasn't for him. It's not for him. It's not for him. <clears throat> the meaning of exhortation. He bought the truth and he sold it not. He bought wisdom, instruction, and understanding. Hello? Amen. So the meaning of the exhortation seems to be that we should endeavor to acquire that happy disposition of soul which will make us give to every question the time and attention it deserves, right? Yeah. To every proof of yeah. its due force and every difficulty of its full weight, and to every advantage is true value. This attitude cannot be had for nothing. You gotta give up something. Mm -hmm. It must be acquired by attention and toil, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We sit and write down all these questions we got, right? right. <coughs> what you looking for, Jay? Only attention and toil. That's right. Why? And toil. That's the attention you had to put on that. Tension and toy. Good. Tension and toy. Mm -hmm. This is the camp, how they was in the wilderness, how I set up. He went and did this. Yeah. I asked him to do it for us. And he gave you each, how many was in each family, how what the tabernacle was, how it was set up, everything in the wilderness. That's the camp. It's the arrangement of the camp of Israel, numbers 2, 1 through 3, to third chapter 39. You can read it. Take a picture, go home, look at it. Get on the phone, go to your Bible, and you can read it. That's how it's set up. And he did it just like that. We all did that. He put the north, the south, the west, the east. That man is something there. His family do not even know. They, they don't know the half about Cleo. They, they don't know Cleo. They don't know him. That's the true Cleo right there. That's the true Cleo. That's the real Cleo right there. Amen. This right here, he died in 2003, 2004. He died. <laughs> and this is why you can't get true. Many of you want true. You don't want to give the attention. You don't want to give the attention and the toil. You got to work for it. That's why I'm telling you, God ain't going to come in your room and speak to you laying in no bed. You can forget that. It must be bought by the sacrifice of wasting and, squand and squandering and of what? Yes, you believe it. Got to get rid of that. Yeah. We, get, we can easily observe with what narrow limits the mind of man is what. How defective minds, powers are, 
how limited there was. Therefore, when it is necessary to consider some combined proposition, I put it in parenthesis so you can understand, when it is necessary to consider a matter to be dealt with, we do not do what y'all, the snow of our men, so the Lord proper protection. You got a matter that's going on in your life, something that you say, I need to deal with this, I got to really get this off, find out what's going on. What the problem is, what the problem is, you don't give it the proper attention, do you? Right. Nope. We shall symbolically overlook some of its properties, right? Mm -hmm. And consequently, our conclusion would be what? Because it comes from what? Our conclusion comes from what? Human, Human, Human reason. Human reason. Human reason. So you, it, it's going to be partial. It's always going to be on your side, ain't it? Yes, it is. And you always going to see things your way because you don't want to get attention and sit down and go over the word of God with the preacher no, so you can find out what the truth is. You really don't want to do it. No, no, no. Because if you want it, you say to yourself, well, if I sit down and when I go over the truth and I really find out what it is, I'm going to be responsible and accountable for that. But I believe in my mind that as long as I don't know about it, God safe. God. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Sacrifices for ignorance has been given a long time ago. You just willing, willingly ignorant, aren't you? Yes. That's what Peter said. They are willingly ignorant. You just willingly ignorant. That means you don't want to know the truth. Because once you know it, the conscience is going to be bound to it, ain't it? Yes. And it's going to beat up on you all day long. Right. Yes. Yes. Because you don't do it. Say this reasoning. Look what it is. What is that? This reasoning. There it go right there. That's going to get us in trouble. This reasoning is confirmed by a variable experience. For every man may remember some things which have appeared false or what? True. Certain or what? Now, uh, according to the hurry or the attention with which he did what? Exactly. Exactly. To acquire this what? Habitual attention. It's commonly a toy somewhat. Word. Word. That's bad and true. Yeah. And therefore demands the sacrifice of our what? Lazy. Thank you very much. The labor of the what? Mind. That's the work of the mind. Bad the truth is the work of the mind. Mm -hmm. Is evidently more worrisome than that of the what? Mind. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> People think that a uh, uh, much learner word to buy. Man, when you buy the truth, boy, the working of that mind, <laughs> the work of that mind, the meditating, thank you, the meditation. Yeah, 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 yeah. The working yeah, of that yeah, mind. Yeah. The, yeah. Work, the, work, the working of that mind, the working of the mind, man, that's where it's, that's where people don't want to work. They don't want to work the mind. Nope. That's where the laziness is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Laziness is within. It ain't talking about being anybody out there. You're going to get up and go to work so you can pay them themselves on bills. <laughs> or you're going to work to get that money. Uh -huh. So you don't fall behind and they come take them little raggedy houses right. we got, right? Right. right? Yes, it is. And them little raggedy cars we got, right? right. right. And so I'm going to have to, quote, ask nobody but uh, nothing. Uh, Right? Yes. I'm going to get up to work that body. I'm going to my legs hurt, my eyes hurt, my back beat down. Uh -huh. I'm going to go. I'm stopping, spitting everywhere, running it all out my nose. I'm like chewing. I'm chewing. My kid hurt, but I'm going to that job, baby. Yeah. But then I ain't going to do use that same energy to open that book and label to read that word and buy that truth out. No, no, I'm not. I'm going to say, no, I'm tired. Right. Yes. I got to give me some rest now. Uh -huh. So I can get up and go make my money. But I'm not going to work that mind to buy that truth. No. Labor of the mind is evidently more worrisome than that of the body. For we may see the greatest part of mankind submitting with repugnance, dislike, to the heaviest bodily toil, rather than suffering that which is what? Mental. He ain't going to do that. Wow. What you say? You beat your body yes, up. Yes, you would beat that body to death. Work that mind over that word. You'll you beat that it. body to death. You'll kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, then to find out that you know what? I ain't got to work this hard. Amen. The Bible said, God said, I can't take him. I can trust him. I ain't got to be doing all this all the time, working mm -hmm. all these hours. Heck no. I ain't got to be here all that time. That is not necessary. Because see, you ain't gonna never find that out until you sit your behind down and stop running behind them doggone jobs. You gotta work the mind. 
He said, this labor of the mind, however, is surmountable or comparable. And like all others, my custom may be rendered what? Easy. Exercise is therefore necessary to acquire the faculty of continued attention. The mind, which when once acquired, will enable us to compare the most noble and exalted ideas and to investigate the most hard to understand parts of knowledge. Then shall we reckon, consider, judge, and evaluate as nothing the sacrifices you've been made. You've just been wasting your time. You don't sacrifice your body all them years, all them hours, all them days, and come and sit down and find out you're getting this truth. You don't waste it all your time. You did not have to do it. Nothing the sacrifices we have made and the truth when we have obtained it will never be deemed to be. Truth will open to us a fruitful source of what? The truth will form us to feel with harmony our different influences. No. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Truth will rid us of all troublesome what? Hesitancy, doubts, and difficulty. That's what truth will do. You ain't got to doubt. You ain't got to be hesitant about what to do and not to do, right? You ain't got to see it as difficult. All you got to do is just know the truth. And render us both very fearless at the approach of death. The placid or the calm and serene, peaceful pleasures of the mind are beyond comparison, sweeter than those pleasures which are excited only by the gross organs of sex or by the more commotion, wild, disorder, passions of the world. So, so, if the pleasure of advancing in human knowledge be very great, as it is universally allowed to be, that's your technology, mm -hmm. what charms must accompany the attainment of that knowledge which concern the things of immortality? Mm -hmm. It is in retirement, drawback seclusion from the world, that our attention can exert its full first, its full force, and consider religion in all religious roots. Truth will enable us, besides to feel with suitableness, the different employments to which we are called in what? A man who has cultivated his mind will distinguish himself in every what? A man whose way of thinking is erroneous or fruitile, untrustworthy or worthless, will in every station be pitied or what? Truth will moreover free us from ever harassing, disturbing, and troublesome what? You ain't got to uh, uh, be troubled. You ain't got to be disturbed. You ain't got to feel like you're being harassed. All you got to do is sit down and find out what? Truth. Truth will tell you whether you're being harassed or not. Truth will tell you whether you're being disturbed as if I'm troubling you. Truth will tell you that. But I don't want to sit down and find that out. Because if I sit down and find it out, I'm going to be lying the whole day. Yes. I'm going to find out that I'm a liar. Hey. Yep. I'm going to find out that I don't know what I think I know, right? Okay. And I don't want to know that because I always want to believe myself that I have power to have eternal life. No. Yep. Mm -hmm. No. Yes. No, no, I want to find out that truth. If I find out truth, I might find out I'm on my way to hell. Woman. Yep. And I don't want to believe that. I like believing what I believe right on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Truth will moreover free us from every harassing, disturbing, and troublesome what? Yeah. To be tossed about with every wind of doctrine is the most violent what? Situation. Yeah, it is a situation where none can what? Boy. Except Boy. those who are seriously engaged in the study of what? Truth. Or those who are utterly what? And finally, the value of truth appears in the composure and calmness of what? Mind. Which it procures, takes care, attend to, and approach of what? Yeah. Yeah. Famous story of Cato, Eudicensis. Eudicensis is well known. Cato, having decided to quit this world, he wished much to be assured that there was another world. For this purpose, he read over attentively Plato's book concerning the immortality of the soul and the reasonings of that philosophy. Plato satisfied Cato so fully that Cato died with the greatest tranquility. He had peace of mind then. Mm -hmm. And he got that from a book, mm -hmm. although it was a false book. Mm -hmm. He saw beyond the grave another what? Bro, bro. Where tyranny could have no dominion, where Pompeii could be no more oppressed. Mm. And Caesar could triumph no more. 
So long as the soul fluctuates between light and love. So long as the soul fluctuates between persuasion and doubt. So long as the soul has only presumptions and probabilities in favor of religion. It is nearly impossible for the soul to behold death. Without what? But the Christian who is what? Confirmed. Strength. Being raised above death's power. By the what? Security. It's secure from what? Cato the heathen could break this terrible cave. Who would not Cato the Christian? What would not Cato the Christian have done? If he had true. <laughs> we have Matthew chapter 19. We have verse number 21. Jesus said unto him, If you will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, give to the poor, thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. He just told him to do what? Buy the church. I'm at Matthew 19, 21. Jesus said unto him, If you will be perfect, go and sell that you have. Give to the poor, you shall have treasure in heaven. Come and do what? Follow me. He just told him to buy the truth. When the good man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful. For he had great what? Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man, this is not talking about God can do anything he want to do. Is it? No. No, it's not. You got to stay in the context of scripture, church. If they pull this one scripture out and say, God can do anything. No, he can't. No, he, he can only do what he has revealed in his word. That's what God can do. And that's what he's going to do. It's what he revealed in his word. Right? Amen. It says, verse 23, But then said Jesus unto his disciples, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Very, verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say unto you, to who? It is easier for a camel to go through the ivory needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You go back to the verse. I told you I was reading yesterday in the book, and the scripture just confirmed what I was reading and what the guy said. Verse number 17. It says, enter into life. Mm -hmm. Verse number 24 says, enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Entering into the kingdom of God, you just entered into what? Right. Now you got to do what? Right. Now you got to do what? To the Lord to, Lord to the end. 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 When you enter into life, you just bought the truth. When you enter into the kingdom of God, you just bought the truth. Yeah, and now what you got to do? Endure it to the end. Do like Cleo, you got to endure to the end. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed. Say, they take this whole scripture out of context. Who then can be saved? Can't be Christ. Jesus beheld them and said Lord. to them, With men, mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. what is this? Yes. Be saved. Be saved. Be saved. Who then can be saved? Yes. Jesus beheld them and said to them, Which men, this? You can't leave, you can't leave, you can't take this out of the scripture. This. This what? Who then can be saved is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Amen. Take that out of the context of Scripture. I want to make this something that's not. So, Jesus is going to speak in these last days to us soon because Psalms 1989. He said the word is already settled in heaven, right? So he's not going to change, right? No, he's not. He's already settled in heaven. 
go to 23, right? Yes. Read cut. We want verse 29, right? Read cut. He said, it's not my word like a fire. <clears throat> it's not my word like a fire. 23, 29. Amen. It's not my word like a fire. It's not my word like as a fire, said the Lord. Like a hammer to break the rock in pieces. Go back to Revelation chapter 11, verse number 6. Say, these are power shed heaven, that reign not in the days of their prophets. They have power over waters to turn them to blood. Talking about the two olive trees. And the smite bird with the plagues as often as they will. And they shall have finished their testimony. The beast that is sent out the bottom to the pit shall make war against them. Talking about the beast in the Bible split, that's in Revelation chapter 9. Shall make war against them. He shall overcome them and kill them. Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of this great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in grave. They that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, make merry, shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets, two olive trees, tormented them. Hello? Yes. That's what we do, don't we? Oh, yeah. What do we torment them with? Truth. 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 What do we torment them with? Truth. 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 They hate truth. We torment them. We tell them the truth. What do we torment truth. their flesh? We torment their souls. We torment their souls. No, we do. Torment them. They dwell on the earth. Mm -hmm. After three days and a half, and they dead in trespasses and sin, right? Yes. Yes. Or truth torment that soul doesn't. Yes. 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 If it does torment that soul, after three days and a half, the spirit of life, the spirit of life from God, breath, entered into them, resurrection, they stood upon their feet. Great fear fell upon them when saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven say, unto them, come up hither. They ascended up to heaven in the cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Hello? All right. So I said our experience that we went through. You got to match the Bible, else that experience is not about. Amen. Talking about the story of the two olive trees. Say the story, therefore, of the two olive trees, Revelation 11, 1 through 13 provides a paradigm. A paradigm is a pattern. This story, what we just read in Revelation 11, 1 through 13, the story is a paradigm. Paradigm is a model. Well, it's a pattern. This pattern is all the way through the Bible, the two olive trees. This is all the way through the Bible. The two olive trees is the pattern. It's the model. It's all the way through the Bible or in the kingdom. This is what happens when you're in the kingdom. It's a model and a pattern for those of us that are in the kingdom. This is excellent. The story therefore provides a paradigm of faithful prophetic witness, echoing me a historical precedent. So the precedent for the two olive trees has already been set. This is historical, this is an historical precedent. It has already been set. So it's a model from Genesis to Revelation. It's a pattern for those that are in the kingdom of God. We are called the two olive trees. It says, it pictures the power of the true prophet's message, his rejection and martyrdom, and his hope of eschatological, in time, vindication, issuing, <coughs> issuing both in judgment and also more prominently in salvation for the world which rejected and triumphed over him. Look at verse number 13. No. And the same hour there was a great earthquake, 
and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the God of heaven. They was judged for rejecting the prophetic message. This is, I'm reading this very slow. Revelations 11 1 through verse number 13. This is the pattern for the churches who are called to the prophetic ministry of the last days. This is a pattern for the church. This is what we're reading in 11 1 through 13. You've got to see that it must take place in your life before you die. It's the pattern. It's the model for the churches. And John is writing to the seven churches of Asia Minor. He's letting them know this is the pattern. This is the model that you must go through if you are going to be a faithful witness to all of trees for Jesus the Christ. Or perhaps we should express the message as a conclusion. How much more is this the pattern for those who witness is a greater thing even than Moses or Elijah and against whom the beast musters great force. The message that we have, the witness that we are given is greater than the witness that we read in Matthew 17 with Moses and Elijah. The witness that we are witnessing now is a witness that's greater than the witness that Moses had and the witness that Elijah had when Elijah was in Israel and when Moses was bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt. Because we're witnessing for Jesus now. That's what we were doing when we went to the fruit. We was witnessing for the truth that we believed in for clear. That's what we was witness to. Amen. We was witnessing to the truth that Cleo lived. That's why we were there. We was witnessing to the truth that Cleo believed. That's why we went. Amen. When we got there, I found out that there was no truth. And when I got there, and I sat and I read it, and I turned to Carolyn, and Regina and the rest of y'all, I said, what's wrong with this obituary? Carolyn said, I haven't read it yet. What was wrong with it? There is no truth. Ain't no truth in it. But that's what disturbed me when I didn't see no truth. I don't see no truth in it. I see some facts about his earthly life, which according to Philippians chapter 3, Paul said, that's dumb. Amen. Paul said, this is dumb. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, that the life reflections they wrote, Paul said, it's dumb. It's not true. Paul called it dumb. So that disturbed me when I didn't see no truth. So I knew I had to witness for the truth. I'm olive tree. We olive trees, right? Oh yeah. What is it? What is an olive? What is in olive? What is oil your picture of in the scripture? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. What is it? Oil your picture of in the scripture? Truth. What is oil your picture of in scripture? What is oil your picture of in scripture? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yo, yo, scared. Holy no, Spirit. Scared. No. What is oil a picture of in scripture? Holy Spirit. Thank you, Rose. Truth. Amen. Holy Spirit is true. Hallelujah. Don't say the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells you the Spirit is true. It says the Holy Spirit is true. Bible says. Amen. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? True. John 14, 16, 17, John, 15, 13, John, 
16, 26, 27, 1 John 5, 6, Spirit is true. Yeah, because you forgot. You talking about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is true. <coughs> so we went there to bear witness to the truth. But if we went there for our purpose for being there, our purpose for being there was for truth. That's why we was there. We was there for truth's sake. That's why we was there. We were there for truth. But then when I was sitting there, I was reading the bitch word, we seen there was no truth there. We seen a lot of lying there. First we started seeing drunkards there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There were some drunkards there. Yes. Some homongers there. Yes. Fornicators went to there. Yes. We seen that. Yes. We seen some homosexuals there. Didn't we? Yes. Yes. We seen some lesbians there. Didn't we? Yes. We seen some liars there. Didn't we? Yes. Oh yeah. We didn't see no truth. Then we really didn't see no truth in obituary. Because this is our purpose for being there. This is why we was there. Yeah. Because we was representing the truth that he believed. And we was there to stand up for truth. There was no truth there. We was the olive tree. We was the olive tree. We, we wanted two olive trees. The beast was there. That was there. So you can understand what I'm reading. Yep. It says, mm -hmm. Our witness is greater, greater thing even than Moses or Elijah. And against whom the beast musters great, greater forces than the witnesses of God had ever been faced before. What did all of y'all say? I've never seen nothing like this before in my life. Yep. There wasn't none in there but a bunch of darkness and all that truth that was represented in the cast. But the truth was gone because the soul wasn't in there no more. Right. The body was just a representation of the truth. That housed, the body was just a, represent, a representation of the truth that housed the truth. But the truth was gone. There wasn't nothing there but his body. The story, the story we talked about is Revelation 11, 1 through 13. The story functions as a call to the churches to fulfill this pattern in their own witness. You got to do it before you leave here and you've done it. But you got to endure it to the end now. Amen. You fulfill the pattern. The pattern that they went through in the Revelation chapter 11, 1, 13, we experienced that same pattern when we were sitting there among those beasts, those evil forces. The church must fulfill that. It is not so much a prediction as potential prediction fulfilled to an extent that it secures the church's identification. When you went through that, you, you identified yourself with truth. When we went through, we identified ourselves with truth. You was with there, you were, all of us was together. We identified ourselves with Jesus the Christ. We identified ourselves with truth against them. That's exactly what happened. You got to identify yourself with truth before you leave. So you better buy it. Amen. And that's what happened. I couldn't believe this when I picked it up and read. It secures the church's identification with the witness of the storm. This is a pattern. This is a model. This is a paradigm that goes all through the church. Elijah did it. Moses did it. Jesus did it. The apostles did it. The prophets did it. The church got to do it too. The church got to identify itself with the pattern and the model that's in the Bible. That's how you're going to know you the church. If you don't identify with it, this pattern, this model that we see in the Bible, you don't experience that in your life, you are not the church. You must go through. You must have that experience in order to identify yourself as the church. And when you go through that model and that pattern, what we did, it secures our identification. And lets everybody know they're secure. I know who they is. I know what they represent. I know what they believe. Right. 
It is primarily a summons and a promise. That's what you call to. God summons you, summons us, summons us there. He summons us to that, and He promised that He will deliver us out of it. <laughs> Which belong in separately together. You can't have a summons, and you can't have a promise. You can't have the call, and then don't have a promise to deliver you and judge those that afflict us like that. It will be a call to that experience. It is primarily a summons and a promise, which belong separately together. A dramatized version of the Lord's word to the church's smirk. Ephesians 2.10. Let's go to Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians, I mean, uh, Revelation 2.10. Revelation 2.10. Revelation 2.10. Amen. The Lord's words is a dramatized version. Revelation 1 through 13 is a dramatized version of the Lord's word to the church in Smyrna. Revelation 2 10, be faithful until death. I will give you. The summons is be faithful unto death. The promise is I will give you the crown of life. Got to endure to the end. The role of the spirit in, in, in directing Christian life towards the physical arrival of Jesus, the role of the spirit in inspiring those who bear the witness of Jesus come together in Revelations 1 through 13, which crystallizes one of the major messages of the prophets. Bearing the witness of Jesus is a matter of sharing in Jesus the persecution and the kingdom and patient endurance. Bearing the witness of Jesus is a matter of sharing in Jesus the persecution. The last scripture I read or I was reading when that woman took the microphone from me was John 15, 20. Let's look and see what it says. I couldn't believe this when I read this. It says, bearing the witness of Jesus is a matter of sharing in Jesus the persecution. The last scripture I was reading was Matthew 15 and 20. What does it say? If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Bearing the witness of Jesus is a matter of sharing in Jesus the persecution and the kingdom and the patient and servant. And endorse. Look at Revelation 1 9. Revelation 1 9, what do it say? And I John, who also had your brother and commanded me and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in this house that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Why he was on the Oh Lord. That's why he was on the Lord. Bearing the witness of Jesus is a matter of yeah. sharing in Jesus the persecution and the kingdom and the patient endurance. Okay. Bearing the witness of Jesus leads to suffering, <clears throat> rejection, and death. We're going through the suffering. We're being rejected, right? Yes. You're going to die for a church. To a citizen of Pergamon who grew Sarkikos, the martyrdom of Antipas, this was merely the way to death. So according to the beast's way of seeing the world, the death of the witness was his victory. Look at Revelation 11, 7. Revelation 11, verse 27. What it says? And when they have finished their testimony. What you got to do? You gotta finish your testimony. You gotta finish being a witness. You gotta endure to the end. When you finish your testimony, what happens? Right. The beast Come on. Come on. Come on. That's right. It's not gonna happen until you finish your testimony. Right. Hello? Right. 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 
truly decide. But if you look at this mm -hmm. spiritually, to mm -hmm. many people from the perspective of the perusal, it is the way of life. That's the way of life. Look at that spiritually. Verse number seven. Finish the testimony. That's the way of life. That's the way to the eternal life. The way to the eternal life, you've got to finish the testimony. Right. You've got to endure it to the end. That's the way of life. You've got to finish the testimony. Finish. 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 Right. Faithful bearing of the witness of Jesus depends on an outlook formed by the hope of the physical arrival of Jesus in the light of which martyrdom is called the martyr's victory. The eschatological perspective alone creates the paradox of contradiction in which the invitation to new life is also, so it must seem in the church's ages in the 90s and some is to death. The invitation to a new life is the summit to death. What new life are you going to get? Eternal life. So we think that the new life is going to be a new life in this world. No. It's going to be a new life in the kingdom to the summits of death. Eternal life. There is also a further dimension to the story of the witnesses. The story of the witnesses is Revelation 11, 1 through 3. It is clear that it follows not only precedents from the Old Testament history, but also rather more closely the history of Jesus, who shared the fate of the prophets before him. The witness resurrection after three and a half days and their ascension in a cloud recall Jesus' resurrection and ascension. Look at Revelation 11 8. Same thing Jesus went through. And their dead bodies. Revelation 11 18. Sorry. In Revelation 11, 11 18. And the nations were angry, and your wrath is come, the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and you should give reward unto your servants, the prophets, and to the saints. And to the saints. And them that fear your name, small and great, and you should destroy them which destroy the what? Mm -hmm. It is strictly, matter of fact, historically specific statement, quite uncharacteristic of the visions of the revelation. It resembles the equally specific reference to the martyr Antipas in Revelation 2.13. Despite appearances, John's prophetic imagination does not really carry him away from the world of concrete human existence, or at least does so only to bring John back to it with new spiritual given perception. perception. The story, Revelation 11, 1 through 3, of the witnesses is rooted in the specific historicity of Jesus' cru crucifixion and is intended to take root in the lives. Jesus' cru crucifixion take root in the lives of those who bear the witness of Jesus in the world. That's what happened to us when we was at Cleo In this way, the story permits a vivid representation of the faithful witnesses' identification with Jesus. Or with what? In his witness and death. And also in his vindication. The pivotal role which the history of Jesus plays in the Revelation does not detract from but rather reinforces the eschatological outlook of the book. The conclusion of eschatological hope in the Revelation is certainly not the meaningless of present existence. The present takes its meaning from the redemption already accomplished. Look at 1, 5 to 6. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, verse 6. And from Jesus Christ, who was the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, washed us from our sins, in his own blood, made us kings and priests, unto God his Father, to him be glory, and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The redemption is already accomplished. Look at Revelation 5 9. Look at Revelation 9 9. They sung the new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, 
For you was slain, has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation, and has made into and has made us unto our God, kings and priests, who shall reign. So the present text is meaning from the redemption already accomplished. Revelations 1, 5 through 6 and 5, 9, which guarantees the future hope, defines its context. The coming Lord is Jesus who was crucified, whose dead is alive forevermore. Also provides the model for positively living towards the physical arrival in the meantime. The followers of the Lamb, the followers of the Lamb must follow his way through death to life. Revelation 14 and 4. See? Now you understand the vision. Revelation chapter 14. Verse number 4. These are they, right? Right. Which were not defiled with women, but they are virgins. These are they which followed the Lamb, hello? Wherever he goes. These were redeemed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The first fruit of the earth of God and the Lamb. And their mouth was found more God. What's found in their mouth? Church and group. They are without fault before the throne of God because they do what? They do the truth. Thank you very much, Karen. That's how we follow him. His way was true. The followers of the Lamb must follow his way through death. And so doing, they may know that it is the way through death to life primarily because it was for him. He died for the what? True. What we going to die for? True. True. What we going to stand up for? True. True. What we going to have what? True. What we going to have? What we going to have? Eternal life. Eternal life. What we going to have? What we, what we tell the truth. Like true. true. Persecution and suffering enemies. Amen. You have to become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Amen. Well, we don't want this enemies. You cannot have a truth without having what? Enemies. Yeah, you gotta have it. You cannot have a truth without it. You cannot have the word of God and not be hated. You cannot. Go to 17, 14. God, God gotta understand this. Go to 17, 14. 1714. 17.14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Again, I have given them thy word. Thy word, 1717, thy word is true. 1714, I have given them thy truth. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world. And he didn't get a world true. He gave the world to us. Even as I am not of the world. I pray not that you should have taken them out of the world. If you take them out of the world, what do we take out of the world? True. Yeah. If, if, if we don't, ain't no word, ain't no truth in the world. Mm -hmm. But that you should just keep them from the evil. They are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world, sanctify them through that truth. That word is true. In their knowledge of the risen and exalted Jesus, they have a preview of the perspective from the producer. It says in there, go back to Revelation 11 and 8. Revelation 11 and verse number 8. It says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the, great, the city of the great and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was 
crew something fine. Now, it says that Bobby's going to lie in the city of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, which also our Lord was crucified. It says, finally we must ask about the great city, which the Spirit identifies as Sodom and Egypt. The phrase where also the Lord was crucified seems to identify it as Jerusalem. That's not true. But the great city is not Jerusalem. The great city is, in, is Revelation. The great city is Revelation, otherwise consistent terminology for Babylon. Look at Revelation 14. Look at, look at, look at Genesis chapter 10 and verse 12. Talk about the great city. Genesis 10 and 12. Genesis 10 and verse number 12. Hi. Um, Lord. Looking at the great city. Um, oh, 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 Lord. The great city is not the real one. Well, oh, oh, it's Lord. It's not what it's talking about. <laughs> the great city is always identified mm -hmm. as Babylon. Mm -hmm. Look at Genesis chapter 10, mm -hmm. and verse number 12. Mm -hmm. It's this precedent. Yeah. I mean, Exodus. Genesis, rather, 10, 12. Yeah. Look at Genesis chapter 10. <clears throat> Verse number 12. Mm -hmm. Genesis 10. Verse 12. It tells me. And resin, talking about Nimrod. They'll say, look at that. Cush, he got Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Even, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. The beginning of his kingdom was Babylon, Iraq, Akkad, Kalnath, and the land of Shinar. Out of that land went forth Asher, and built the Nineveh, and the city of Rehoboth, and Kalah, and Rezin, between Nineveh and Kalah, which is the same hills of the great city. Go to Jonah chapter 1. In Christ, the word, the word, in Christ, the word. Go to Jonah chapter 1, verse number 2. Arise. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Chapter 3, verse number 2. So Jonah rose, went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. Verse number 3, 3, 3, uh, sorry, verse number 2. Arise, go into Nineveh, that great city, preach unto it the preaching that I did thee. For eleven, for eleven, and should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons who will not discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle. For Revelation 11, for Revelation 11, Amen. verse number 8, for Revelation 11 and 8, Amen. for Revelation 11, Amen. verse number 8, right? Amen. Did I say it? Revelation 11 and 8, do you understand? Their dead bodies shall lie in the city of the great city. God. Spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. God. Because our Lord was on his word. Look at 14 and 8. The word. 14 and 8. I know you got to find out. Well then, he was crucified in Jerusalem. God. He was crucified in Jerusalem. We're not reading the gospel. We're reading, we're reading the what? What are we reading? A revelation. We're reading a revelation. 
the reading of Revelation. <clears throat> 14 and 8, here we go right here. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. 16 and 9. Good. 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 You like to good. 16 and 9. I got that. that 19. 19. Good. And the, great, and the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God, and given to her the cup of the wine and the of his wrath. 17 18. <laughs> and the woman which you saw is that great city which reigned over the kings of the earth. 1810, standing afar off for the fear of the hurt told me, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for one hour is your judgment come. Verse 16. And the last, and saying, the last and last, that great city that was clothed with fine linen, purple spotted, decked with gold and precious stones and pearl. Sixteen, eighteen, and cried when they saw the burn. I can read all the way down to twenty-one. And cried when they saw the smoke of burning, saying, "What city is like unto this great city?" And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and blood, saying, The loss of loss of the great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships of the sea by reason of her costliness. For one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, you heaven, you holy apostles and prophets. For God <clears throat> had avenged you on her. Mighty angel took up a stone like the great millstone, cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. So, Sodom, Sodom and Egypt in Revelation 11 and 18, the phrase where also the Lord was crucified seems to identify it with Jerusalem. But the great city is Revelation. And the great city is Revelation. Otherwise, consistent terminology for Babylon and Rome. So when it says Sodom and Egypt, it is a picture of Babylon or a picture of Rome. We need to realize that the spirit's identification are not simply allegories, but define present situations seen in eschatological perspective. In its rejection of Jesus, Jerusalem fortified the role of the holy city. And John, therefore, transferred to New Jerusalem, transferred it to New Jerusalem. So when we go, look, look at 11 and 2. But the court which is without, the temple leave out, and the measure, measure, and measure it not. Here go God's rejection of Jerusalem as the holy city. For it is given to the Gentiles mm -hmm. and the holy city used to be Jerusalem shall be tread underfoot forty and two months. When they rejected Jesus, that's when the holy city was destroyed. And then it becomes New Jerusalem. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation Preacher, 21. I was going to ask about that. Look at Revelation 21. Um, because you have Revelation 21. Verse number 2. And I, John, saw what? The holy city. I wish they had a witness. You. Down, God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Of Hebrews chapter. 12, Hebrews 12, <clears throat> Hebrews 12, 
Okay. Hebrews 12. Okay. Verse 26. Hebrews 12. Look at verse 21. Good. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. You say, how was the faithful city become a what? Right. It was full of what? Right. Righteousness lodged in it. Right. But now murder. Right. right. The word. Okay. Ruler, when the Lord was crucified, the head that that action, just as every other city in the world, mm -hmm. was to behave, became, in a sense, the model for the rest. So Jerusalem is the model yep. for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. When it crucified our Lord. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called. Mm -hmm. That's why the pattern mm -hmm. is going to play out mm -hmm. all the way through the Bible. Because mm -hmm. when the world mm -hmm. crucifies us, mm -hmm. it's going to be Sodom and Egypt. Yeah. It's going to be Babylon. Yeah. It's going to be Rome. Yeah. It's a pattern that's played out all the way through the scripture. And Jerusalem mm -hmm. became a model mm -hmm. for the rest of the persecution <coughs> that the church is going to receive in the world. After Jesus, after Jesus died, the model and the pattern is going to continue all the way until the end of the time. So those that yes. reflect the model yes. and the pattern yes of Jerusalem yeah. as they crucified our Lord. They are yeah. called Sodom and Egypt. Yeah. What are we living in right now? Yeah. Sodom and yeah. Egypt. What is Sodom a picture of? Yeah. Immorality. Immorality. Yeah. We got lesbian there. Mm -hmm. We got mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that going on right now. Mm -hmm. So that's Sodom. Egypt did what? Oppressed the, the church. Yeah. So they Sodom in Egypt. America is Sodom in Egypt. Amen. What was we sitting among? <laughs> Sodom in Egypt. Amen. <laughs> wow. Preacher, I was talking to Muni uh, JD about that. Before anything, I said, when we were circled around, I told I said, we in Goshen. Yes, we are. <laughs> What's Gosha at? Gosha was in Egypt. You best believe it. Now, man. We was in Sodom Amen. in Egypt. When we were sitting there mm -hmm. in that building. Yeah. We was in Sodom and mm. Egypt. Yeah. Mm. 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 It was among immorality and yeah. oppression. Christ. We were. Put my hand out for 1320. Was inside of an angel. So you got to have the model and the pattern. If you don't have the model and the model and the pattern, then you cannot identify yourself with the church. So now y'all understand that, right? Mm -hmm. It said the identification of the city therefore belongs to the pattern set out by the story of the witness. The story belongs to the pattern set out. The story is set in Jerusalem because Jerusalem treatment of the prophets, and especially of Jesus, is a and is an example. This is what those who bear the witness of Jesus, we must expect that from the world. Okay. You must expect that. Mm -hmm. Believe it at an apostate there. Mm -hmm. Now the apostate may go back and tell all the rest of the apostate. <laughs> Boy, he's going to get them killed. That's what he's going to say. But, but, yeah. this is what those who bear the witness of Jesus may expect from the world. You're supposed to expect that. You should be looking for it. That's what's going to identify you and secure you as being the church. Mm -hmm. Every city and little streets, the corpse of the witness life is thereby identified as character seen in the spirit of Sodom and Egypt. The value of this identification is part of the spirit's message to the churches mm -hmm. is that it enables them to characterize situations of conflict in their true perspective. So you should look at every situation and circumstance you need. You should be able to go in the Word of God and find that situation and that circumstance in that Word of God. All your situations and circumstances that you go through for truth, you can find it in the Word of God. That's why I picked this up and ready to show. That situation and circumstance that we go through, that's going to identify us as the church and secure our identification as the church. Because the pattern has been set and the model has been set by the prophets, Jesus, the apostles. Now the church has
has to follow that same pattern and model. Do you understand? Yes. And do you think? Yes, it is. It says you distinguish appearances from underlying reality to see through the apparent success of the hostile world and the apparent failure of faithful witness. What did Jesus say? We're not going to succeed, y'all know that, right? It says the apparent failure of faithful witness. We're going to witness, mm -hmm. but our witnessing is not going to, our witnesses, our, our witnessing to the word of God and our witnessing for Jesus Christ, we're not going to be successful, is we? Go back to John 15, the police say in John 15. It's not going to be successful. What he said in John 15. You're going to get it. Go ahead. What he said in John 15, verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his what? Lord. Lord. If they have what? Persecuted me. They will also persecute you. you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep your sayings also. They're not going right. to keep my saying. Good. What is our saying? It's the truth. So we're going to witness, mm -hmm. but our witness yep. to the world is going to fail. <clears throat> but it's going to get victory for us. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to kill us for that. Mm -hmm. That's why when you get to the 16th chapter, <clears throat> verse number 2. No. Look what he says, 16 2. They shall put you out. <coughs> they shall put you out. Yeah. They shall put you out. Of the synagogue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The time coming. Then who's going to kill you? Come on now. They don't kill us. They separate from us, right? Right. They hate us, right? Yes. What is that called? Yeah. Right. They separated us. They separated us, right? Put us out, right? They separated us, right? They killed us, right? What is that called? It's called murder. They hated us in their heart. Yeah, yeah. Murder. They hated us in their heart. Amen. They go back to the beatitude. They hated us in their heart. That's the mark. That's the back to Matthew 5. Wow. Man. <laughs> wow. That's so true. Then Matthew swam it. Cry. Hello? Mm -hmm. 
day of the judgment, yet yeah, whosoever shall save you, his brother Rakha, shall be in danger of the council, but whoever shall save you, fool, shall be in danger of what?
So they get one scripture. Well, you don't supposed to honor no man. Cursed is the man. You ain't trusted in the man. You trusted in the truth. That's coming out the preacher, the pastor, the teacher's mouth. Well, you ain't another man. You a man just like everybody else. Man, that's an excuse not to obey you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. yes. Well, I got a scripture for that. Yes, it is. I got a scripture for that. Go back to First Thessalonians. So you want to play games? Mm -hmm. And then I give you this and shut your mouth, woman. Yes. You go to First Thessalonians, right? And we go to verse number chapter four, right? And we go to verse number eight. Amen. 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 Right? Yeah. It's saying he that despises, yeah. despises not man. Yeah. But God. Yeah. Who have given unto us his Holy Spirit. So when you're not receiving me, you're not receiving God. You're not despising me. You think you're despising and you're rejecting the man, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. No, you're rejecting the truth. No, you don't. That's what you're doing. You sit there on the stand. Nope. So whatever Christ said, you got to honor. So it said, he that receiveth, whomsoever I send receiveth me. He that receiveth me receiveth him to send. I have sent you in my name to preach the gospel. You are my ambassador. Wait a minute, is there a scripture for that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Go to 2 Corinthians. Right? Yes. Go to 2 Corinthians, right? Yes. Chapter 5? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 5 what? What is that? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were to assist you by us. We pray, what is the word pray? It means to beg, right? Yes, sir. It means beg is binding oneself. Right? Yes. Ambassador is press duo, right? Yes. I gave you that, right? Yes. E R E S B E U O yes. means to be a senior. Act as a representative preacher to be older. To be older, that's an elder. The word ambassador, P R E S B E U O. See, many people get mad when when they are when they are exposed, Carolyn. Now they mad. Because now they're exposed for the stupidity and the ignorance they said. So now they're exposed. Then they're going to start making all kinds of excuses. Well, I want to talk about that. I'll, 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 thank you. That's Press Greenwald, that's an ambassador. Ambassador. Occupation and profession. O-R is just like E-R, church, okay? Yes. Okay. That means a preacher. Amen. And you look at it, Bumblebee, it says, the preacher is in whose place? Look at the scripture. The preacher is in whose place? Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's exactly what it said. Amen. That's exactly what it said. Amen. I believe in predestination and a sovereignty of God. That's exactly what it says. It's in Christ. Yes, I'm in Christ's place. Yes. That's exactly what it says. I'm in Christ's place. I'm in Christ's place. They'll make a excuse for that. You ain't you. He said he's Jesus. Did I say I was Jesus? Mm -hmm. I said I'm in his place. Mm -hmm. I'm representing him. <laughs> so you don't despise me. You're just a man. No, you're supposed to honor me just like if, if Christ was here preaching himself. Yes, he may. I don't care what no man say. That man that says something like that, he is a false teacher. He is not of God. Mm -hmm. I tell him to his face, you are not of God. Because you're rejecting the word. You're rejecting truth. You're rejecting scripture. He that receiveth whomsoever I see, receiveth me. He that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. You can't scratch that out the Bible, J.D. You can't take that and make that anything you want to make it. That's exactly what it says. You can't change it. 
and making it to something you want it to be. You can't do that. Amen. No, you can't. I got this out of Gil. Predestination, sovereignty of God for you. He said, I have sent you in my name to preach. I explained to y'all like this. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go to Gil. I know what it says. Amen. I have sent you. I, I just, I'm just got me a witness. Amen. I have sent you in my name to preach the gospel. You are my, you are my, my personal representatives. You will be. Hello. Yes. You will be. Not by everybody, right? Y'all are me. I got others. Other are me. They used to honor me, didn't they? Yes. They used to it. Yes. Did they? You yes. must witness to them. Yes. Did they witness the preacher? Yes. Did they obey in the past? Yes. Did they get their money? Yes. Yes, they did that time. Yes. You a witness? Yes. I'm a witness. You received me as an angel of God. Yes. Even yes. as Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. You a witness? Yes, I'm a witness. I have sent you in my name to preach the gospel. You are my ambassadors, and you will be honorably received by many, in which I shall regard and take notice of and esteem as though they had received me. Wow. What you say? I know it. Amen. Want me to read it so you can understand? Yeah. I have sent you in my name to preach the gospel. You are my ambassadors. And you will be honorable and received by some of them in the neighborhood those mentioned. Those which shall regard, take notice, and esteem you as though they had received me. They're going to esteem you. Hello? And that's not what it says. And that's not what it says. They're going to regard, take notice, and esteem as though they had received me. What you what? Yeah, he was saying, I will take, I shall regard. Christ's going to do that. Yeah. Christ's going to do that. That's exactly, amen. Emphasize. Christ's going to do that. I shall regard and take notice of and esteem as though they had received me. I'm going to look at J.D. And I'm going to esteem J.D. As if she, when J.D. honor you, be honorable to you, I'm going to look at J.D. as if J.D. had received me. Hello? Amen. Had esteemed me. Right? I'm going to take notice of J.D. I'm going to regard J.D., right? Yes. I'm going to take notice of Carolyn, right? Yes. I'm going to regard J Carolyn, right? Yes. Which I shall regard. I shall. I shall. I shall. Regard and take notice of and esteem as though T-H-E-Y. They goes back to the many. Mm -hmm. They goes back to the many. They goes back to the many. T H E Y. M A N Y. That's plural. Not one person. They. And I'm going to look at them as if they received me. And they're honorably receiving you. Right? You are my ambassadors. And you will, you will be honorably. Honorably received. Hello? When they want honorably received, what did Jesus tell them to do? Shake the dust off their feet. I wish I had a witness. I wish I had a witness. When they went into those people's house and they said, peace be on this house, and they didn't honorably receive them, what did he tell them to do? Shake the dust off their feet. When they didn't honorably receive me in that funeral home, what did I say? To your tents, Israel. To your tents, Israel. He also said, I'm going to shake the dust off my feet, too. I have sent you in my name to preach the gospel. You are my ambassadors. You will be. You will be. You will be. You will be honorably received by many, and which I shall regard and take notice of, esteem, as though the many have received me, even as my Father have sent me into this world as a Savior and a Redeemer, a prophet, priest, and king. And as many as receive me are looked upon by my Father as having received him. In short, such as cordially receive and embrace the ministers of the gospel, I wish I had a witness. Amen. I wish I had a witness. <coughs> and embrace the ministers of the gospel, they receive Christ, in whose name the ministers of the gospel come, 
in which man Christ they preach, and such who receive Christ as preach, receive Christ as I preach him, hold him forth in the everlasting gospel, they receive the Father of Christ. I told you, if you do not, if you do not receive what I preach and hold him forth as the everlasting gospel, God is not your Father. I've been telling y'all this for months, ain't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. Some just told me, go read the commentaries on it. I've been telling y'all this for months. Some just told me, go read the commentary on it. That's what they just said, go read the commentary. I knew what I was talking about. So I read, went and read the commentary on it. When I read the commentary on it, this is what it says. Let me read this to you, because I want to show you the body part of this. It says, it says, such as cordially receive and embrace the ministers of the gospel. <coughs> receive Christ in whose name they come, in whom they preach. And such you receive Christ as preach and help forth in the everlasting gospel. Receive the Father of Christ. Partake of his love, grace, and kindness. Show forth in the mission and gift of Christ to them. They will give, y'all. They're going to pastor and teach it. They're going to give the Christ to them. I'm the gift of Christ to you. Amen. Is that Amen. the truth? Yes. That's what we read. We did. That's Ephesians 4. Yes. The gift of Christ to them. Christ as mediator represented his father that sent him. And the ministers of Christ represent him. Okay? So, so yeah. So that what is done to the ministers of Christ, either in a way of reception or rejection, he takes as done to himself. No. I've been reading that for uh, All right. Where did Christ get that from? Hey, church, look. I speak as a foolish man. I really do. I'm not trying to go. This is a blessed ministry. And then at the bottom of it, I told J.D. to print it all out. And it says, it is a common saying among the Jews that the messenger of a man is as himself. Mm -hmm. As the man himself. That's what Jesus is saying. That's what Jesus got that from. Because the disciples would understand. So it's written in Kiddushin. This is the Babylonian taboo. And that's what they was teaching in Babylon. Let me read to you in the Kiddushin what it says. It says, it says, it has been stated, Rob said, an agent may serve as a witness. Did you hear what I just said? This is in the Babylonian taboo. This is what Jesus is taking this statement from. Mm -hmm. This is what Gil got it from. It says, Rob said, an agent may serve as a witness. The household of Rabbi Shila said, an agent may not serve as a witness. What is the operative consideration behind the ruling of the household of Rabbi Shila? Should we say because he doesn't instruct him in so many words, be a witness for me? Then what about this case? If one would trump a woman before two men and didn't say to them, you are my witnesses, in such a case, too, would the betrothal be invalid? Rather said Rob, an agent may serve as a witness. I'm the agent of Christ. I'm also serving as his witness. The principle in that way strengthens the case, making the agent a witness to it. The household of Rabbi Shiva says, an agent may not serve as a witness. For a master has said, a person's agent is equivalent to the person himself. A person's representative is equal to the person being there themselves. And scripture attests to that. It is as Jesus is standing right here, right now, speaking to y'all. A person's agent or ambassador is equal to the person himself, in which case the agent is equal to the man himself and cannot testify to his own act. I ask you a question. Does that apply to you in your life and your standing? Does that, what I just read, applies to your life and your standing? Yes. Yes, yes, it is. Yes. yes, it do. <laughs> Who do you work for, Carl? Charles? I work for God through the JTDC. 
I said your life. Okay. I'm asking the question again. Does that apply to your life? Yes. And your staff? Yes. Who do you work for? JTDC. When you on that phone talking to those parents, who do you represent? I represent God through the No, you do not. Excuse God. me, JTDC. I ask you again. See, I said, I didn't say in the kingdom. Okay. I said his life and his staff. Yes. Did I not say it? Yes. <laughs> in your life, in your staff, who do you represent? JTDC. When you own that phone speaking to those people, it's just like who talking to you? Dixon. Thank you, doggone right. Who do you work for? When you own that phone talking to those people, it's just like who on the phone? You doggone right. When you at that post office, Regina, working, and you doing that work, it's just as if the postmaster himself is doing it because that's who you represent. Gotcha. I said in the world, yeah. in your life, in your standing. I didn't say in the kingdom. Uh -huh. <laughs> who writes them tickets? Whoever your boss is. Yeah. It's just you represent that company. When you go write that ticket, okay, you don't think so? You don't think so? When they pay the ticket, do they send it to John Richards? Mm -hmm. All right then. Okay, so who they send the ticket to? When they file a complaint, do they file? Do they file a, pl a complaint against Regina Penny? No, they don't. They file a complaint against the United States Post Office. Yeah. When they file a complaint. Who do you represent, Jamie? You don't want to You represent Fairway. When they got pissed off at you and thought you weren't doing your job right, who did they call? They call Fairway. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, the same thing applies in your life in your life as it is in this world. So you can represent who you, your post office. Who do you represent, son? <laughs> that's, that's your life and your standing, right? Church, what is my life and my standing? What is my life and my standing? Preaching the word of God. What is my life and my standing? Preaching the word of God. What is my life and my standing? Preaching the word of God. Who do I represent? God. You're supposed to receive me just as you and Christ receive himself. Amen. 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 <laughs> and then I gave you scripture to back it up. Yes, you Amen. That just show the hatred you still have in your heart for the truth. Yes. yes. Oh so God delivers from hatred of the truth, right? Yes. yes. That's what we need to be delivered from. Um, we need to, need to be delivered from hatred of the truth. That's what it said. That statement that Jesus made in 1320, he was all he was was repeating what was already in that law. All he did was came to fulfill the law. Hmm. That's deep thing. You yep. like that? Don't yeah. yeah. The comparison that was made, you can't directly speak to the CEO. What you say? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> say it again. You can't directly speak to the CEO just because you get mad at the man. Right. Say it again. Uh, you can't yeah, speak directly to the CEO just because you get mad at the company. How do you? Yeah. You got to go through a protocol? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to go through levels? Yeah. To a representative? Yeah. You got to go through representative? Yeah. yeah. Work your way up. Yeah. You got to you what? Yeah. Work your way up. You got to what? Work your way up. Wow. You got to what? Is that what happened in the Bible? Mm -hmm. It was Moses, then God did. Yep. Yep. Moses told him, then God came down there. Mm -hmm. Moses told him, then God came on the mountain, right? Yeah. Moses went back and told God the people, right? You want to say it in the book? He said, Moses went and told God the people, mm -hmm. then God came down on the mountain with thunder and lightning. Ah! Yeah. They said, the young preacher, Elihu, spoke to Job, then God came. Mm -hmm. oh. So he was in God's stead. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the experience you are putting us through. We pray that you may increase our faith, cause us to grow in grace, give us more power to endure the pressures, the oppression and afflictions that is to come upon us. We thank you for the power and the ability that you gave us to endure that persecution we went through. For truth at the front row of Cleo Gillette. 
we know more is coming as these days go by. We pray for patience. We pray for patience that we may save our souls. We only can keep them through the power that you gave us. And you say you gave us that same power that you want them to the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. You say you gave us that power. Increase it. Give us the ability to stand fast in one mind, one spirit, striving for the faith of the gospel. May they have the same conflict in them that they see in them. Heal us, Lord. Deliver us and save us from ourselves. It is in Jesus' name we pray the church says. Amen. Amen.